thing on this, bro. We're starting on this. This is such a good topic to start on. Hey, what's up, everyone? <laughs> good evening. We're here. We're live. <laughs> good evening. Good, good. What's going on, Aflick? What's, what's popping? Well, you interrupted me, man. I was fucking hot on the trail, bro. I was fucking... You know, um... Nah, you said the Sunday spookies, and it just, yeah. like, I was like, we have... To. I still get that shit, too, bro. You know Last of the Mohicans? Have you seen Last of the Mohicans? You asked me if I've seen a movie, and I've always oh, never fuck, seen it. Dude, that's true. But he, like, goes down to the footprint, and he, like, traces it with his finger, and he's like... He's like, oh, it's like two hours. They've been here two hours ago. I'm like, damn, bro. This shit crazy. Like, I'm in the fucking hunt right now, bro. No, but Zoe's always talking about, you know, the Sunday scaries. And, like, I still get them right before Monday, right? And I think, like, wait, why am I scared of Monday, right? Why can't I enjoy my Sunday evening without having this fear of, like, this thing coming behind me? It's like, oh, mm-hmm. fuck, Monday's about to be here. And, and, dude, school fucking ruined it for me, man. School is the, literally one of the worst things. Because I think about, like, learning, right? I think about, like, trying something new like i hate to use gaming right but let's just use gaming as an example um you try like a new game like maybe it's frustrating or not but you just learn things as you go and like learning itself is fun and is exciting and is challenging and is um i guess good right but i think about taking tests in plant side two or a quiz to keep playing or to move on and get like a new battle rank or something like and that like scares me like that idea of school has literally stuck with me, and I've been out of school now for God. I don't even want to think about it, man. But the Sunday scares is, is is terrible, and literally, I work from home. I I sometimes I stream. My job's fucking amazing. They're like, hey, man, you get your work done, do whatever the fuck you want. Damn. I get to see my kid. Like I'm, I get to interact with Zoe. Like there's just like I'm running out of fucking fingers, bro. Phalanges. And I'm like, there's no reason for me to have Sunday scares. I have a, I have, I have the best life ever. I think it's Dang. funny because we had a conversation a while ago and we were talking about like anxiety and how I'm anxious all the time. And you were like, I've never really been an anxious person, but that's anxiety right there, bro. That's true. That's, that's true. like, I had one panic attack in my entire life ever. And it was like the weirdest thing. Cause I've never had one before. And just like, and like for no reason, bro, I was just chilling on the couch, like watching um, Westworld or something. And then it just fucking hit me, bro. Like a fucking sledgehammer. And I was like, and then it went away and it never happened again. I was like, I don't even know what was like, what the fuck just happened, bro? That was weird. Yeah. No, nah, so, dude, it, it, I still have the Sunday scaries too, bro. Uh, it'll be like a Sunday night, and I don't want to go to bed. Like, dude, the ending, the last couple hours of the Sunday is always <laughs> like the worst. Long, dude, and you're like, you're either, and it's like, do I want to be in bed just staring at the ceiling, or do I want to just, like, play games and, like, try to whittle away at whatever's left in the weekend? So, I thought that was a good thing to start off on. I but. feel that, man. It's, it's a weird thing, though, like, because... I mean, do, I mean, do you like do you like hate your job or anything? You like dread going into work or anything? Not, not anymore. I mean, I especially hated it when we weren't in COVID because, like, yeah. COVID. I've been working from home since February, and like, <sighs> it's been six months now. I've just been chilling at home, working, doing things at my own pace. Like, if I have like a lull at work, I'll just like play guitar, or I'll. Uh, there was like a period of time where like we would play Tarkov, or while well, we were both working and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. That was we'll funny. Hatchet runs. Yeah, we never did hatchet runs. Was a chill, we we chill, did we lie. did like little we did little chill runs, little quiet. We didn't bring all the gear, you know. And I would be like, all my work stuff would be on this main monitor right here. But then I would be playing games on my side monitor, just so I'd be like, I'd be looking at like my stuff, and I'd get like a call while we were in the middle of a game, and I just go prone and like answer it, like, <laughs> hey, uh, what's going on? Like supply chain. So yeah, uh, like we're, working from home, super chill, and it's like you don't feel as much, uh, like as much, I don't know like Somebody pressure yeah, yeah oh. you don't feel as much pressure but then it doesn't matter once sunday hits you're just like even from the morning till like maybe 7 or 8 p.m i don't get it until we start internals because internals is like always like the last thing that i have scheduled during like the week and it's like that final thing that like ends that week and then it's like the new week begins basically right after that and I'm just like, dang, like, do I stream now? Do I do I go to bed now? It's like See, 10 p.m. It's not. So I know you're not like a religious guy at all. Like go to church or anything. But like I, I, when I used to like go to church with my family, like I used to think like, man, it sucks being on a Sunday. Like you're I got to spend all this time at church and like and then like my last day before the fucking end of my life, Monday comes. I got to spend it at like hours of it at church. And like mm-hmm. I used to hate that thought of. It's not, it wasn't, well, you might think it's wasting time, but there it, it was a terrible, like, why is it on Sunday, bro? Mm-hmm. No, with they Islam, rest. when I was, like, you know, when I was younger and I was kind of forced to just do whatever my mom wanted, like, it was always, it's on Fridays, bro. So it would be, like, the gateway into the weekend. It was, like, the last thing you had to do before you were free. 
Like I remember leaving. I guess it's not a good spot for it, right? Yeah. Yeah, like a wind, go. a Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was like uh, it's almost like that feeling, like uh, like I don't know, three forty eight p.m. is like forever uh, instilled in my brain, or like that was like the the time when the final bell would ring in high school. It would be at 3.48 p.m. You just be like, throw everything in the book bag. We got this bitch. And like you get, you have it on one strap. You waiting for the bus to come up. You're chilling with the homies. Like, and then you had the weekend, bro. Xbox 360, GTA, uh, Halo, just like chilling. But it, it was, it was like that too. But just prior to high school with like, you'd go to the mosque or whatever. And then we'd have to just like be there and listen to like, it was basically the same structure as like going to church where it's like you listen to the person talk there's like a subject and then you do engage in prayer and then there's like the yeah, donation similar. thing and then once that's over then you have to talk to like everybody and you're like bruh and then finally you're out you get home and you throw everything off bro you're like it's the weekend so see i almost, I almost like that but I don't, I don't know i guess i never i don't know maybe it'd be better if like you didn't have to go to work on a wednesday but like you went to church or something, and like you could like slide it in there. Yeah, true. Instead of, instead of like putting it on the end or before something, I feel like it ruins it. Yeah, but uh, Anything, yo, sorry. welcome guys, welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the the, the Aflix Shocker Podcast number five. Uh, seeking balance in the force, bro. We're gonna talk about balance today, man. But there's some there's some stuff we gotta go over first. We got a couple things that we're gonna talk to uh, talk Ooh. about before we get into the main subject. And first thing we're gonna say, bro, huge congrats. You are number one oh, shit. NC kills all time on the Both Emerald arms. US server as of, was it yesterday or today? It's like two days ago. I'm like a thousand. Or two days ago? Right Dang, Hey, bro. shout out Full Metal Savage, man, for the for coming to the challenge and, and playing and then not playing and then I would play and then I would not play and we kind of went back and forth for such a long time. Um, I, I think he was saying, bro, he thought he was getting COVID and he's like, I, I might not be on for a couple of days. So Dang. hopefully my boy's strong and uh, he's holding down the fort because I haven't seen him for a couple of days. Um, as long as he's good, um, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to pull away, baby. You know what I'm saying? Baby? You <laughs> waiting through it at this point, but yeah, no, yeah. Hopefully, uh, best wishes to Full Metal. Hopefully, yes. uh, I'm not assuming he has it, but if he does, I hope we get a, we see a speedy recovery from him, and you know, we want to see him back in the game, obviously. Just yeah, my yeah, big you're wall going back in. Here, dude. Yeah, you're going in. Let's talk about that too, because we're just kind of tagging up, bro. Do you have any plans for uh, the wall? It, you know, at one point, I think Monkey was gonna send me. It was gonna be a special gift, and I was assuming it was gonna be a 3D printed anchor right which anchor is now you know 2019 whatever you know um but then i was like if anyone comes to my house like our best friends like a cop slash ex-military and if he sees a fucking 3d printed gun of like planet side 2 dude i couldn't handle it so um and zoe would probably murder me too i thought it would be really cool though uh but then i was like okay i need to do something different with the wall and i don't know what to do with it man like all my walls are bare and it's still super echoey in here and it's bullshit so but this is like i said a million times this is the last room that will get updated okay it looks Mm -hmm. like i have liam's tents and tp in here and madness bro but you know at least i have an office so i'm content yeah, I mean, people like if say like my my room here, like my little area yeah, where I stream. On me, bro. I, I look at your side. I'm just, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm like, holy fuck. Well, no, dope. but the thing is, for me, it's like I have cool stuff. Like I got the Spider Man, the Travis Scott. I got like these two posters from these this artist that I really messed with at this one uh, convention I went to. I got the guitars, but if you look, bro, my wall scuffed, bro. Yeah, I, I got was a spider. Like, I got scuff ago. marks like everywhere. <laughs> So it's like even if even if you do, it's like there's always something to do better. And like for you, you need to decorate it. For me, I just gotta paint my shit, bro. Like you have a clean that. wall at least, but mine has all these scuff <laughs> marks. Um, this is right here, awesome, I'm honored. Cool. But uh, yeah, man, congrats on the number one. I mean, what did you Thanks. you you switched over to the to the Goss saw, and did bro. you feel did you feel like it was going by faster once you did that, or was it about you the know, same I told KPM? You, I told Greg, I told everyone you. Would- don't don't hail the anchor you know it was like a meme at some point i think people just were like fine whatever he's a boomer right let him let him go let him just you know slowly just you know like a dry like a dried leaf you know eventually just kind of just crumbles up and blows away um but dude no i got the saw out and i think i i would say 1.5 times better 1.5 times better yeah like i just feel like it's 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 huge man It's, it's amazing like 
I, I think it's the the hundred round mag in it. You know, I mean, I mean, I went on a sixty nine kill streak the first time ever. Never done that before in my entire life. I did that yesterday or two days ago, man. It was it was it was poggers. It was pog- I was pogged out of my mind, dude. <laughs> poggers. Um, I, I don't know. Did I use it correctly? Um, no, dude. And um, I don't know. It, it it made it faster. And I wish I had switched the Goss saw, the Greg saw, the the silent saw, whatever laser saw, whatever you want to call it, a long time ago because I would have been number one, and I probably would have honestly been like close to number. I probably would at least be number two, if not close to number one, if mm-hmm. I had switched. 100%. Yeah, I I don't. I'm trying to remember because I when I played the most like in 2015, I honestly didn't like NC that much just because of the guns. Because I remember it was anchor, anchor, anchor. I remember preferring like the GD 22s honestly. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, I didn't remember liking the God Saw that much when I Iraxed it like on the way to the God Saw. And same with the God Saw, I didn't really feel like I liked it. But now I agree with you. When I play in a scrim like that four shot headshot uh, to kill like amazing like if you can get all four to hit instantly you just melt mm-hmm. the person regardless if they're like an infill or a heavy with adrenaline shield and nano weave so the the goss is really satisfying. nice you have a high killing potential and then usually by the time you run out of the mag like you can get to a spot like if you're really staying cognizant of the amount of ammo you're using you can stay cognizant of where you are positioning wise and get yourself to a place where you won't get killed instantly for reloading for that period of time because it's a longer reload. And then once you reload again, you're back at it again, just shooting people. So, yeah, well, I was man. talking to my chat about it, dude, and I was like, the anchor feels like a two, three, four, maybe get lucky five kill weapon. And on live, the fights that we're going to, and with you know me, me, you know holding W shift, you run into so many more people. So you and your four and the anchors reload is bad, right? So you're forced to reload, and then you just haven't cut through everybody yet. That's what makes the sauce so nice. You just you just keep going. You mm-hmm. just keep you just keep cutting through people because you have 100 rounds. It's amazing, and I feel like the TTK is better on it, or I mean, it just feels better. Like I don't know. I feel like I can kill people cleaner, maybe less bullets because the first the first shot multiplier doesn't feel like the anchor inconsistent. Anyway, I don't want to don't want to stay too long on the topic, but yeah, man, number one, it feels great. Feels good, feels man. Great. Proud of you, bro. I, mean, I memed on you a lot, but I'm proud of you, bro. You put we in that. We can play effort. other games. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, for me, bro, I'm chilling, dude. Like, I'm kind of, kind of getting bored of Planet Side. I'll be honest. I haven't been playing it as much because I'm kind of getting burnt on live, and I like six v six, but the effort that gets put into setting it up doesn't feel worth the investment. Like, you're setting yeah. up, you're setting up for like thirty minutes if you add up all the mean time of getting it ready if you're if you add the queuing time as well it's like oh that's even longer but let's say like once the queue pops like all the teams have to get chosen then we have to let we have to sw- what is it wade through all the memes that happen while we're choosing our yeah. teams then we have to get to the base set up the sundays set up the script then we get there we wait we count down then it starts and it's only like 10 15 minutes and uh then halftime we have to switch sides Oh, Jimmy's going to the bathroom. Uh, Sally has to go uh, wash the dishes. She'll be right back. And then it's like, okay, now we'll start the second half. And it's like 30 It's like our son just spawned a mega wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then we can't, the terminal's not hacked. Uh, it's like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And, or it's like, oh, our, our base got cut off because somebody else is doing a scrim. It's like, it's, it's a lot of like just stuff that's kind of got on my nerves a bit. And I think I've been tunnel visioning the game too much. So I've kind of been diversifying the portfolio which i think is important man mm-hmm. I, I mean even you while you were grinding out number one you're playing warzone with your boys mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, yeah and I, I think you might have fixed the issue so i might start streaming it it's just we just don't have any chemistry we just, we're slowly working up it's, i mean it's kind of goofy i think you, maybe you guys would actually like it because they're not not nearly as tryhardy and i i'm like t- trying to be tryhardy and then you know, um, it's just it's it's funny. So maybe I, I will start streaming that as well. Um, but no, Warzone has been cool because I got some IRL friends that you know they're always on console, and my other friends on PC. Finally, so we we're able to play together for like the first time. So it's kind of fun yeah, in that regard. Um, but yeah, no, Plants I Dude is uh, it's any game, bro. You you can't invest so much time into. You got to be careful. Um, yeah. And the reason I used to like Pog or Open League is because at work I would just grind out some work while I'm waiting in this queue, and like I'm like, yo, I don't want to be captain. You know, someone else with the team. I just work. And like I would just I wouldn't have to care about the whole lead up to it. And oh, it's time to start. Okay, boom, I can grind out, and then boom, I'm back to work. So that worked nicely for me. But that's obviously not everybody. So yeah, I don't I don't like the, I don't like doing stuff like that. I feel like um, I don't know, and maybe it's just the nature of my job and stuff like that. Like I don't feel like I want to 
like overly invest like half of my time or half of my like my mind towards like working while the other half is like on standby to play because if i'm not in the mood to play i feel like my comms won't be as good i won't be as good i'm not gonna have as much fun because i know like once this is over i just have to jump right back to work so i only play it when i'm off work and then it's like i'm off work sometimes i have to work more than eight hours just because of the nature of my job and it's not honestly it's funny too because like my old job i would work exactly eight hours and i'd feel more exhausted than this new job i have where i would work more than that just because of what i'm doing which is which is pretty good i'm, I'm very happy for that but even with the the new job nature being more enjoyable it's like i i still want to enjoy my personal time and if i feel like i'm spending a lot of my time in queue to do the thing i want to do rather than just doing the thing i want to do it's like Nah, so I've been playing Battlefield, been looking at some new single player games to stream, uh, got a Ooh, lot of good feedback. Dude, you know what? That's what I was about to say. I was, well, you just hit it, but like, I feel like your ghost of Pleasure uh, was great, dude. I mean, yeah, it was fun. A lot of people I enjoyed to play it. it. I would have streamed it, and then it's like, oh, sorry, your PC. <laughs> <It's> like, <okay. laughs> yeah. So I got to enjoy it through you. I know, like, I, a lot of the time, like, I'll, I'll watch a stream and I, I just won't be able to chat, or maybe I chat for a little bit, but I might lurk just because I got so much going on family wise. But uh, I definitely check out stuff like that, and, and it's fun to experience that without having to get, like, a console or something. So. Yeah. And I was talking to, to Kuhami's actually about it, and he was just saying, like, he doesn't like playing single player games mostly because of uh, the whole you have to be basically alone, and you kind of get worn out just being by yourself rather than playing with a group of people and enjoying your time like with them so me streaming ghost of tsushima he said he enjoyed that just because like he was it felt like he was going through a single player game and enjoying it but not being like alone so and Absolutely. i was That's it's same thing for me Go ahead. During the day, there's really no one. To, like during the day, there's not a lot of people to play with. Mm -hmm. You may have a, a, two people in the squad or something. That's why I started streaming. Is like I wanted to. I, do, I like I'm a huge E personality. Like I like being around people. And like playing plants by itself, which is like I don't get much out of it. Like that's why I liked you know the whole idea of backs and like capping bases and I like to bounce capping and and and, and killing people at the same time, right? Um, but playing with other people is what makes the game fun to me, and I can do that through streaming at the same time. But anyway, um, no, man, that's, I mean, you should definitely do that more often. I mean, obviously you need more single-player games, but with um, Cyberpunk hopefully coming out and, you know, soon. I mean, I'll probably stream that too. I wish we could play together, and I think someone will say multiplayer. I don't know, but that'd be dope. Yeah, I think the majority of the effort's going to be, like, everybody playing single-player, but if there's something multiplayer, that'd be pretty cool. If it's cool, okay. If multiplayer's good, then we can try that. If not, then we'll single-player it up, man, man. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, you know, Kawhi asks a question here saying, how is playing with people not more stressful than playing alone? And I'd say it just depends on the personality type. Like a lot of people who are extroverted need to have human contact and you sit alone in your thoughts for too long and you start to go insane. So it just depends on the person you are. Um, and I think I'm, ge I'm genuinely one of those like I, I enjoy doing things more where I can share the memories with people rather than it just being like my own thing and i think that's probably why me and you both stream honestly it has nothing to do with like the viewer count or making money off of it it's more of just like interacting with people while you're playing because it makes it more enjoyable and more memorable well chat you gotta remember that some people relax with people some people relax alone it's just and like the opposite scares me right when i think about like when zoe's like like wants to do something by herself. Or like I don't. Want, she's like I don't want to hang out with any of our friends. I'm just like, what? Like you don't want to. You don't want to go to, to get some beer. You don't want to hang out. Like you don't. It's like I don't understand. Like it like freaks me out. Um, and she's like the opposite. She's like I don't. I can only imagine like getting off work and then doing something with people. I yeah, like, oh, okay. I I remember having a talk with my boss actually, and uh, he, he was saying that. I don't remember how we got into this conversation, but we were just talking about like how we like we we unwind and stuff like that. And, uh, the, for me, I was saying like, oh, I like to spend time with people. And I feel like when I'm with other people, I almost feel like energized to do more things. And then he said that he agreed and that he was also like that. But then he brought up his wife and how his wife will go to like a movie theater and watch a movie completely by herself. And I was like, that is unheard of for me. Like I have never gone to a movie theater by myself to see a film. Like I always go with other people to see a movie and if there's nobody to go to see the movie with me, I will not see the movie. So again, it's just completely dependent on the person and exactly bro. So yeah, man, exactly. I had a roommate in college. Super cool dude. Taylor Gray. Shout out. Gang gang. Um, gang gang. This dude would go to restaurants all the time by himself and eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. I'm like, bro, are you 78 years old? 
is has all your family passed and you're the only one left? And you're just going to this restaurant by yourself because you have to. I'm like, no. Like, what are you doing? Like, anyone can go with you. He's like, I. He's like, I enjoy it. But mm-hmm. So I, I've never, I've never gone to a restaurant by myself. No, I, same. I might get in line, take out and say, to hey, go. I'm gonna eat it at home. Hey, Mickey D's. Yeah. Is ice cream, is ice cream is it fixed? Oh, it's not. Give me, hey, give me that, give me the McDoubles, bro. Give me the McDoubles. the two McDoubles. Hey, hey you yeah, ever have a McGangbang, bro? Do you know what that is? I've never done that actually. A McGangbang is a, you get a McDouble and a McChicken, and you open up the McDouble and you put the McChicken in between the See two. That? I'm not a good mixer. That was that. That was that two dollar ultra sandwich, bro. We did really that back in middle like, school. Gross. Hey right. man, you got it. When you only got two dollars and fifty cents because your mom didn't trust you with the debit card, like the other kids who have money, that's what you got to do, bro. It was always two dollars and like nine cents with tags, bro. <laughs> uh, Damn, bro. Bro, I remember, and I walk out. I'd be trying to like siphon the remaining cents and try to get like a uh, the fifty cent apple pies, bro. That sh- that was hard. Yeah, I think people judge you. That's what I always think about, which is the dumbest thing ever. I'm an idiot. Uh, I'll just say it. Um, like people are like, oh, look at that poor 29 year old sitting at McDonald's <laughs> by himself. Hmm. Oh, he's he's probably a gamer. That's another reason, bro. It's like that self conscious. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like oh, if no, I'm not cool. with if I'm not with someone, then it I or just like I don't even. I guess that's just that shows how weak, feeble minded we are. Where it's yeah, like we're peasant. Yeah, it's it's one of those like NC Emerald kills. Uh, <laughs> You're peasant in real life. Yeah, man. Uh, but uh, something else, bro. The p- pill rosters are set, man. Tournament coming soon. You are you excited for pill two? You know what, man. Even though I'm not playing in it, which is heartbreaking. Um, I I make, I'm like super excited, bro. 250 viewers on on some of the streams. Like the amount of work that's going into it, the the amount of teams. I know Cross John's like we we didn't have the other teams that we thought we'd have. I'm like, bro, that's that's just normal. People are gonna drop out. They're gonna invest way too much time into it, and that's just normal. But the amount of teams that we do have is great. Like it's it's very exciting, man. There's a lot now, of teams this time. Yeah, new teams, uh, not so good teams, really good teams, uh, teams with one carry on. It's just it's exciting, man. And and and. People need to chill out and realize that only one person can win. Only one team can win the tournament. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. There, there, there could be 50 teams, but only one team can win. Like People get discouraged. Like, oh, we just lost. It's like, dude, relax. Enjoy the game. You can be competitive. It's okay to be a little upset that you lost, but only one team can win. It's okay. And enjoy yeah. it. And then you come back next year, and maybe you get better. Yeah. it's it. Honestly, the – not only the amount of teams, but the amount of players, too, once you get that all multiplied out. It's a lot of people. And there's a lot of people involved in this. Like, I think we're if you add up all the players, the staff, and the, uh, the what's it called? Bro, you need to stop typing, bro. Just talk to the chat, bro. What are you talking, bro? I don't know. Wait till after, bro. No, I was gonna. I yes. forgot. I forgot to say this earlier, bro. Yes, my king. I forgot to say this earlier when I was. I was watching no back shit. the last. I was watching back the last podcast, bro. Your your keyboard's so loud. You're clickety clack. You're like, damn, bro. We're like- <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, true. Shocker does hate the clickety clack. It, it makes me lose my 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 train of thought too, bro. I don't want people in the chat think I'm not listening to him, bro. Let me, I, I will. She's my soul. Shh. Dang, Yasmin wants me to drink water too. All right, soon, soon, soon. I got water over there. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so the amount of people that are involved in Pill, it's it's insane now. If you add up the 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 cast of the cast of casters, the entirety of the coaches, the admins, the staff, the players, and the team captains, we're at about like 300, 200, 300 people. Oh shit! There's a lot of people. Every single roster has like twelve people in it. That's true. And then there's all these staff, all the people behind the scenes working on like the the what's it called the the JSON for the the the, like the script, the JSON for OBS to make everything look good, all the transitions. There are so many people like working in it, working on it, people playing in it. There's so much stuff going on, and I'm really excited for it. So uh, I'm not too sure when it starts. I think it starts mid September and goes into October. But it's yeah. gonna be a good time, bro. And I don't think the brackets have been released yet. So they asking. will be announced soon. Uh, yeah, they're doing the same thing that up. they did in the Pill Invitational. Um, the they're gonna stream it, and it's gonna be a lot longer now. The Pill Invitational is six teams, uh, mm, but this is like huge. yeah, this is again like 20, 30 teams. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, one of the brackets is already set. I think it's for a different time zone, but everything else is just like ready to go. Just need to figure out who's going to go on which team. And, yeah, or excuse me, who's going to go on which brackets. But yeah, Bax has two teams this year. One led by me, the other one led by Monkey. 
um and then yeah man i mean not to make it awkward but yeah you're not on the team but for more like like personal reasons bro like i think i explained it well in my my stream the other day i was just you know i mean you're busy bro. like at the end of the day you're busy and it's... i said okay like i said a couple things number one i do have a family now i have a, I have a son like and um you know it's it's hard for me to commit to something because and like we always clash heads it's always like Oh, our friends want to hang out. And I was like, okay, well, I told you two weeks ago I was going to have this scrim. I told you yesterday I had this scrim at 8 p.m. She's like, yeah, but our friends should come first. I'm like, these are real people. These are fucking <laughs> robots. Like, these are not like NPCs that I'm playing with. Like, these are people that are also setting aside time. And like, we, you know, we had to kind of get through that. Um, so that's one part of it. And like, I think our team this year is less tryhardy. You know, Zyros, Ryan, um, Slandy. Like, well, he's not tryhard, but. Um, some of these people aren't on the team. Like I am just a little too tryhardy for our current roster. And I think people just want to chill and have a little bit more fun, which is fine. Um, and, you know, back to the point of like tilting or, um, you know, me saying, don't waste my time. My thing was like, I don't want to cancel on our friends getting in the fight with Zoe about it. And then I go to a scrim and then, oh, sorry. We decided we're not going to show up on time or we're just not going to have the scrim. And then I look like a fucking idiot and I got to bite the bullet, you know, IRL and like, that's what I'm like, dude. Don't fucking waste my time. Like, I, I have to take, it, I have to take it serious because mm -hmm. otherwise, you know. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm sad, dude. I really wanted to play, but you know, who knows with you know Liam's sleep schedule and you know helping out around here, like you know, do I, that's my priority. I have, that's that comes first. All the time in my stream, I'm like, hey man, short stream. Liam woke up. I gotta go. So I don't want to do that to the team either. And you know that could yeah, cause man. me to tilt a little bit as well. So that's why I'm not on the team. It's sad, but it is what it is. Appreciate yeah. you asking me though. Yeah, and uh, that that whole like you you getting your time wasted and stuff too is probably why I'm the the new team captain of the team just to get like the the timings and stuff better. But uh, yo, know, talking about somebody in the backs team and talking about the team in general, it is one of our members' birthdays, man. Ooh, yeah, bro! <laughs> Happy birthday to Huge Milkies, bro! Happy birthday, yo! Feels birthday, man. Let me put that hey, in the chat out, bro, real man. quick, Happy birthday, bro. Dog. But yeah, man. Excuses? Yeah. Excuses. Damn, bro. Backs, backs out. Oh, fuck, dude. Be caught in the chat, bro. Coming in hot. But yeah, man. It's 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 my boy Milkers' birthday, dude. Happy birthday. Welcome to the For team, real? bro. Shout out, man. I hope you enjoy your birthday, dude. Um, But, yo, talking more about Jaeger stuff since I think the majority of my time has been on Jaeger. Pog has been added to the list of Jaeger events. And I hate calling it Pog. I'm going to call it Open League after this first time we call it Pog. But... I feel like they wanted to try hard so less, and then so they went with something meme like Pog, and now it's like, it, but it, it it's turned into like the opposite of 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 not caring, and it seems like it's too cringy. So I agree with you. Yeah, man. Oh, dang! You gave him a little sub. Shout out, Milkers, bro. Enjoy. It. There's your birthday <laughs> I know gift, bro. To, you don't really get anything for it, but I mean, hey, man. I, you know, nah, he gets the anchor least... emo. He gets the A flick Pog, dude. That's that's that's, that's, that you, that's Pog. That's Pog. Not not Open League, bro. But yeah, man. Open League's cool. Um. It's been, I feel like I've gotten a lot better in 6v6 just from it. Because, you know, you can just, like, queue up whenever you want um, and play with a random group of people and get that environment of the 6v6 on a consistent basis. But I'm burnt, bro. I did it for a week and I don't want to do it anymore. It's you guys just are crazy. Chill out. It's just, it's not, like, fun consistently enough for me to want to do it. Like, internals and pickups, those are fun, I think, because you have to force yourself to, like, What's the ration it? You can't do it every day. It's every Saturday, every Sunday. And then scrims too are like every once or twice a week. But doing like seven, eight, nine, ten pog games or open league games, it's like, bro, by the tenth one, you're just like negative twelve, not because you suck, but just because you're just like a zombie, bro. You're literally just <laughs> you're playing like this, dude. You're like oh, <laughs> you literally right, you, you got, got the down. mouse on the <laughs> on the stomach on the stomach, bro. <laughs> Oh, that's no, funny, real, dude. I told Cross, and I'm like, dude, I know a lot of teams have already backed out, and players. There will be more players and potentially more teams that just don't make it to the actual to the actual pill, dude. Because people are gonna, you know, oh, we gotta get, I gotta do Pog all the time. I gotta get in there, gotta get my practice, and you know, um, like I said it before, some dude was like, hey man, you know, my team or some other team, we saw practicing three screaming three times a day. I said, dude, what? There's no money on the line, dude chill bro it's okay not for real and then the thing is too i think tilting gets into it too where it's like you start sucking and like i'm gonna throw zangief under the bus here bro like <laughs> he was doing hard. he was doing bad in like a couple uh like internals and then in pogs and stuff like that 
And like he was just so you could hear how drained and like depressed the man became. He was just like, yeah, man, I suck. I'm like, bro, it has really nothing to do with your skill. It's just like your stamina at this point. Like, how long True. can you force yourself to play this over and over until you're just like you're diminishing and how well you're doing? Again, not because your skill is diminishing, but just because your focus, your energy, your willingness to even play is all falling off. And then that, again, that factors into what I was saying earlier of like you're waiting around for 30 minutes to play for 20 minutes. <laughs> it's like you're waiting for a bus to get set up, for Andy to set up the, the script. For Jimmy to spawn in, for Steven to join the outfit, it's like, oh, uh, it just, it's so time consuming that, you know, you, you oh, have to dude. really ration it out. Devs, give us a little bit of a help out here, man. Yeah, I man. know there's some chat, chat, chit chat about it, but I mean, and I get it. It's like, dude, we're eight years in. Is the game alive? Is it dead? Do we want to invest our small amount of resources into any type of competitive scene at all? Is it worth it? But it's like, hey, well, we tried construction and we tried PSA. Yeah, man. Okay. And, th and so that was all like try, yeah? that was all like dev stuff. Yeah, that's what, but I'm saying, can the devs help out in you know? Or excuse me, community we, driven stuff from like like the devs did. I mean, sorry, yes. I like I completely blanked. I was reading chat. Like the community was like, man, it would be great if we could build bases, and then they were like, there you go. It's like, oh, cool. if only we could call in this massive fleet carrier and put all the people in it. There you go. It's like, hey, can we spawn in at these bases and have, like, routers that instantly spawn us rather than having to, like, drive buses up? Ooh, bad news. We can't do that. It's, like, it's like, it's so easy, bro. It's so easy. Well, I think you think 6v6, you think, okay, that's 12 people. That's nothing. But mm -hmm. now you're talking about, oh, there's two, 300 people involved in pill too, right? It's like, okay, this is maybe this, and maybe that's gotten the attention, okay? And maybe there, maybe it is something that they'll look into. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So, yeah, I mean, Pog is cool. I think a lot of people are enjoying it. Um, I think they average about one and a half matches going concurrently, where it's like during peak hours, there'll be two matches going on side by side on different bases. But on average, I think it's more on that 1.5 because in half of the time there's two matches going on. The other half is there's only one match going with like two or three people waiting in queue. Um, but again, cool concept. Uh, the, the development stuff that they put into it to get like a bot to do everything that like a person oh, would dude, do. So much better than Open oh, League. Very, very, fun very well done, man. Fantastic. Bro, beautiful. The, the, life, the, life. the like the the linking your account, and if you don't have an account, an account is instantly sent to you. Nobody has to do anything like manually. Uh, the captains being selected, you choosing your team, all that done in Discord with a bot. Shout out to that whole admin staff. Um, I don't know I everybody like off the top some... of my head. Little Star Wars Ugnaught somewhere, fucking you know, crammed down in some computer, just working on the code down just there. Clicking like, we're just clicking and clacking. Like, we're all, we've never let him out. It's like, dude, that's fucked up, man. It's 2020. You can't do that, man. They're like, fuck it, dude. He's not even human. <laughs> nah, like, that's dude. crazy, bro. I don't even know how people do that. Like, I think you you also kind of fall in that boat with me, where it's like we just kind of do like support stuff for like a company rather than like engineering IT stuff. So whenever I see like a p computer programmer do some cool programming oh, yeah. thing on the side while doing like their actual job like they're just doing this passion project for a game that's semi dead and stuff like that it's like oh that's sick bro like whoever did that shout them and i know like burr ryan uh monkey rapid those are like some of the people in the staff so shout out to them and uh you know keep making it better bro i think once some dev support comes in we'll have a pretty cool game mode for people to hop into um, and, and it's widely popular, bro. That's the thing. It is actually kind of popular. Yeah, man. I think it's the, again like averaging about like one and a half matches. So that's that's a good. I think it's I, I around think like twenty four, like twenty four people playing concurrently, and then you kind of take the people who are leaving, the people who come into queue. So I think uh, there's a lot of people so far that have um, that have that pog role right now that are just kind of chilling on standby. They play whenever they want. Yeah, and Spy says over 200 matches so far, and it's been like two weeks. That's, so that's crazy. Really that's really, really good stuff. Um, but I kind of, this does make me want to talk about something that we didn't put on the sheet, bro. Dude, when you go when you go rogue like this, bro. Bro, I'm going you. rogue, bro. I'm tossing the smoke grenade, and I'm going to bring out something new. Oh, look at my neck beard. Oh, that's disgusting. Go ahead. So, the one of the arguments that I think comes from the dev team is that making instance diversions of the game like this takes away from people playing the main game and that we shouldn't do that and i have never disagreed more and i'd like to hear your thoughts on it too bro 
Uh, okay, a couple things. A lot of people play Jaeger and don't play Life. Okay, that's true. I don't, and I don't think I think a lot of those people would just not play the game at all. Okay, it, it keeps people here. Um, it, it it gives people a break from Live. Okay, um, it's almost like a different game in general. It's the same game, obviously, the same gun mechanics, yada, 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 but it's almost a different experience. Um, and I think providing that is A-OK. Look at games now, dude. Look at uh, Modern Warfare. Uh, you can do the BR. You can do multiplayer. Like, there's different options for you to do. And it doesn't necessarily I – mean, I'm sure it takes away from the other game, but I don't play I don't play Warzone for the multiplayer. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with bringing people in um, for other games that would really appreciate not to get absolutely obliterated by 90% overpop and maxes and air and everything's just hitting the spawn room and you can't get out, right? We saw some when G played the game, bro. We see shooters play the game and they don't last very long. Why? Because they want to shoot. They want to do things that they're good at and that they have fun with. And so providing an option for that is not a bad idea. Um, I mean, the whole point of PSA, right? Uh, doing a BR, it's very different. Is that going to take away from live? Yeah, it would have fucking taken away from live. But we tried that. Like, why can't we try something else? Um, so that that's something that I think uh, we're not looking at. And to be scared of something that could be successful if it doesn't work out we go back to live not mm -hmm. we've seen construction psa uh do, 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 do. i look a fucking like i'm watering my lawn right now dude but i'm not okay um try it if it doesn't work it doesn't work we've we've wasted plenty of time doing other stuff that hasn't worked and there's no reason to be afraid of something like that especially when the community's been doing it for so long yeah and i think call of duty is a really good example for this just because of warzone so i bought modern warfare when it came out prior to warzone being released because I think Warzone didn't come out till three or four months after the main game came out. And if those devs had the same mindset, then they would have said, we're not going to release Warzone because it's going to take too many players away from the main multiplayer. Well, if that happened, then Call of Duty would have stayed, this Modern Warfare at least, would have stayed at like this marginal gameplay area where it's like, I don't know, maybe like 3,000 viewers on Twitch, maybe like 10,000, 20,000 concurrent players. But releasing Warzone brought more people into the game and now it's oh, always yeah. in the top four top five games being streamed Huge. on twitch yeah Huge. and it's it's again like if they had that mindset where it was like oh if we release this too many people are going to run away from the core multiplayer they're not going to play search and destroy tdm etc it's like okay then the game isn't as success successful anymore because they were afraid of the risk rather than capitalizing off the opportunity so the same thing goes for Planetside. I think adding yeah. variety to the game is important because variety is what made the game fun for us before. But the variety has run out and it's and it's it's almost become stale. It's like okay, we mm -hmm. flew the planes, we drove the tanks, we captured the bio labs and the tech plants, etc. Look it's at like, chat. Dude said the game's been out for eight years. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's been dude. out for eight years, and it's this. It's basically the same game, but with new gimmicks added to it rather than meaningful variety. And all of the well, again, attempts to make like a ver like real variety have been implemented into the game and then pulled away like pretty quickly. And we'll go into that here in a sec. We got some videos. We're and stuff trying too. things. There's okay. I said this on my stream. We need consistent content, whether that's maps coming out or just like let's build upon simple things that work, like six v six. Okay, we know the gunplay is great in Planet Side. Let's build upon that. Doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be hardcore. If we want to do something on the side, like construction, we want to do something on the side. PSA. We want to do these things on the side. That's fine, but that can't be like the main thing that comes out and it fails, and then the next thing fails, and it's like you can't do all these fails over and over again. We need something that we know should work. Six v six works. It just does. Let's get a little support around it. That's what, like you said, freshen up the game, but keep what's good great. Yeah, man. And I think this is actually a good place to transition into that uh, that Battle Island video that you were watching <sighs> earlier. I think, oh, it was, I think it was yesterday, right? You were watching it on stream and you were talking about it. I don't know who does the fucking... This is old as fuck, so don't get excited, okay? This shit's not anywhere close. It, it, it came out and it's never been used. I think joke practice on it they got access somehow back in the day okay this is not new um it is cool whoever does the trailers for plant side 2 they do a good job they do their they do the job well they get people excited at least me and then um it doesn't come out so go ahead yeah man and I, actually i'm just gonna play the visuals and we can just talk about it while it's playing but the like the whole meaning of like the battle island was almost to give and they even talk about it and they hype it up in the way they they have these like little cuts between the action where it's like vast interior areas that are like taken and isolated from the vehicles in order to ensure like really strong infantry fights. 
and then there were areas where you would have like really big areas for tanks to fight but wouldn't necessarily like you wouldn't get mad if you got caught out there as infantry again because you're stuck as like you're in the tank area so they had this whole idea where it was also 1v1 this isn't uh like a 1v1v1 like alpha wars this was supposed to be one team spawns on the north one team spawns on the south and you go at it it's like that wait, real tug of war wait i thought there's three factions in planet side hmm I, don't, I wonder what i wonder who would think to do that this is what i think is funny because this is the same this is the same game this isn't like planet oh. side one and a half or planet side three this is planet side two. Oh, oh you're so kind of like starcraft has three factions and they don't all fight each other at the same time that's interesting you can actually have one faction versus the other in in on the ladder that's oh yeah and a meaningful and balanced area that not oh. only as not only balanced in the sense that both teams are fighting each other but is also balanced in the sense of the map being uh, isolated in certain areas to promote specific versions of combat rather than making it so that literally anything can be thrown into one area and rather than balancing based off of restricting gameplay you're balancing off of promoting areas for people to go to with that gameplay so this is a balanced map you talk about bases that on the south side are the same on the on the north? That's it's crazy, bro. And this is all on Planet Side 2. Play now for free at planetside2.com. It's crazy, <laughs> dude. Like, the fact that all of this stuff is, like, in the game right now and it hasn't been capitalized off of. Because if you look at that trailer, all of that stuff is it, they're game assets that are already in the game. That map is completely made in that trailer. You can see it. Maybe there there's, might have been certain there's things. There's nothing spectacular about the map Ooh, if it gets too excited sometimes whatever it's gonna be huge okay there's nothing there's nothing construction there's nothing like it's just a a, a well thought out, well i don't know i never played on it, but it looks like a well thought out map an idea like we're not we're not adding some crazy new element orbital strike uh bash and fleet carrier it's like no oh a, a map that is smaller um it restricts the, uh, the amount of players a little bit okay it's one team against another team and it looks semi-balanced it's simple bro that's what they need they just need to do simple simple yeah. first and then slide in some crazy shit on the side if it doesn't work fuck it simple 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 but out from there simple but not bland because i think when you look yeah. at outfit wars that you could consider it being simple but in my opinion extremely bland like to the point that it's boring it's just the same gameplay loop that isn't necessarily fun with people that almost have to do like these weird roles that don't align with what the makes the game fun um right, right. like i was watching uh, lex was doing like an analysis on the on one of the deeg podcast episodes and i think the biggest thing that i really enjoyed from watching lex is the fact that he understood that there there are things in the game that make the game fun and they're the core competencies of the game that's like the gunplay uh, the movement in the game isn't bad to the point where it's like, oh, it's impossible to track people. And the, the, at the end of the day, it is a FPS. It is a it is a game meant where your objective is to literally just kill people. But adding things that don't like complement or support that core competency of the game that makes it really fun, and adding new things that are almost like different circles on this graph of like where it falls in under like the different genre of video games. It's like it doesn't at the end of the day, help out that core competency that makes the game fun for people. You're adding these gimmicks that will, like, attract people. And it's also it's always, like, the five-head, I think this is a good idea, Andes, where it's like, we should add yep. construction. We should add a tank that holds seven people in it. It's like, th this isn't the core competency of the game. What makes the game fun is the thing that you find yourself doing 80, 90% of the time. And for us, it's 100% at this point, or like 99, because the only thing we use vehicles for is to taxi us to the next fight if we ever need exactly. to use it. Mm -hmm. So Exactly. Do you see Madden like, dude, new idea. What if we added soccer to Madden? <laughs> it's going to be huge. Two footballs, same time. Two footballs, same time. Madden 2021. But what I don't do even, I don't even think... In. That's I don't even think that necessarily makes as much sense or like rel that makes more sense I think relative to that game than Planet Side adding like construction to it because I think Planet Side adding construction to the game is like the Madden developer saying what if we added basketball to Madden you're like I buy Madden to play football why am I playing right. basketball in Madden and it's not even like a full basketball game it's just like this little basketball mini game that's just there on the side and you're like. 
that's what they're doing. They're just adding too many different things to the core game, and they're putting it all together. There's no separation of any of it. And it just doesn't – and it just kind of becomes clunky. It just doesn't fit well. And Madden with Some people are like, it's great teams. to be the guy in the Cobalt Sunder farming you as you run out of the spawn. There, Liam's crying. No good. Then go for it, bro. I'll carry. I'll carry. No, you're fine. Uh, he uh, Sleep trend. Okay. All right, bro. You sure? Mm-hmm. Chat, should he check on check on his son? I, I have him on the monitor. I'm, all right, all right, he's checking, bro. He got the screen. He got the screen. I will go. I will go if 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 it hits the time. But yeah, man, the the <laughs> it'd be like Madden added a third team to to games too. One v one v one. That's outfit wars basically. Yeah. Um, but keep it simple, man. And that's and like chat was just saying, dude, we haven't even got simple. Just give us simple. Simple is yeah. better than. Craziness that does, that fails because because what's happening is bro we've been playing on Indar Ti alloys for so long now you could give us fucking anything a new map new base and like as long as it's a decent base and doesn't suck like people are gonna should be happy about that but we're not even getting that it's like construction didn't work you know what I'm saying oh, well I don't, I'm a, I'm on repeat here let me chill yeah no it's and I think somebody in chat just said it's a dish with too many ingredients and again it it goes back to that core competency thing it's like you don't want like sugar. Or, or like corn syrup poured on top of your lasagna. It's like you want right. you and it's like adding more things to something doesn't make it better. Adding things that complement or supplement the thing that makes the core thing good, that's what makes a game better. And uh, I think, in my personal opinion, just from looking at the trailer and watching your initial reaction on it, uh, when you watched it yesterday, like you literally watched it in like the first like five minutes of your stream too. So not a lot of people caught that, but uh, you know I was quick on the trigger, bro. I was going on. I saw Aflick went live. I clicked, bro. I was like, "What's up, homie? What's good, bro?" Good, baby. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like the it, you shouldn't add. You should make it so that your core competencies are being supplemented or complemented. And in this case, a lot of the stuff they've added hasn't done that. And I think we both are in full agreement that this map, this battle map, where it's one v one. There's different areas. It's almost like a bad company map. I remember sending that to you too. Like one of the old bad company two maps or battlefield maps where like you couldn't drive a tank anywhere you wanted in battlefield. And uh, like True. a lot of the areas even in battlefield were like hidden underneath things that couldn't be destroyed so that jets and helicopters couldn't just blast you. Um, so, you know, uh, you having the trailer, I'm going to grab him and try to put him down real quick. Um, yeah, there's, there's no, re everything's been let run rampant. There's no restriction on it. At least in like Battlefield, like okay, the tank. We gotta wait for the tank to spawn again. You know what I mean? It's like nope, I pull it. Dope. Brb though. Uh, you can start the trailer, man. All right. But yeah, yeah. The no, dang bro, he's leaving me by myself. What's up, chat, bro? You know we chilling, bro. He's gone, crab brave, no mods. All right. Um. Yeah. The the other thing that we were gonna talk about, I guess, to just like finish this up though, like we both really think that Battle Islands, like that that one v one, would have been a, a solid thing to start building a new foundation or a new variety with within planet side and you know we lost we lost a lot a lot when we when we think we found out that that wasn't actually going to be in the game which is completely unfortunate uh but the other thing that's coming up and i think is extremely cringe bro i think this is this, this is just, I, i'm not a big lore guy but the the they've been hyping up this whole planet side uh like lore stuff for a couple a couple weeks maybe months now i think where the 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 Esimir is melting or something like that, but uh, here's the trailer for Esimir, bro. Uh, and uh, I'll just put it full screen and we can watch it together. Uh, I'm, I'm not super big on it, but I don't know what it means, bro. cool bro like i don't know what to say like this like it's it's <laughs> i don't I, I i don't know what this means i don't know why this is a thing this is one of those pause champ monka s uh why <laughs> why is this happening to us sort of things um but the um the 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 whole I don't I don't know man. It just it feels weird. Global warming. It's it's one of those the I think they're trying to hype up they're doing some changes to the map, but I, I don't think that changing what it looks like cosmetically is gonna be enough for people to be like, holy crap, I'm coming back to the game. 
the whole concept of making a map like almost seasonally change like in a game like Apex or Fortnite is is one of those things that is exciting for certain players where it's almost like there's a there's like seasons to the game. There's like season one, season two, etc. I think Apex is on like season nine or something like that right now. But the the whole concept, I think, trying to apply it to Planet Side doesn't really work out in my opinion. I think the whole concept of changing up a map has something to do with the game changing as well. And if it's just literally what we think it is, where it's just they're going to melt Esimir and then change something up a little, it's kind of going to be a little boring. Uh, yo, in good timing, bro. I was about to run out of stuff to say, bro. It's weird being by myself. I don't... <laughs> uh, but we just watched the video. Have you seen the video? It's it's literally... um. It's it's lit- the Esimir like transmission lost video. Oh yeah yeah yeah, I watched it. What are like, your what thoughts, man? Like I I just kind of said like I think it's kind of weird that it, it feels like they're just gonna melt the continent. And Lex made a funny joke too earlier when he was doing his thing. He was like, they're just gonna melt it, turn it into Indar two, and then just have two Indars rolling at the same time. Uh, maybe they'll melt it and it'll turn to the volcano. And what was that? What was the volcano map called? Is it in Planet? Everyone's side? like, yeah. Everyone's talking about yeah. It's like Planet Side one. What was that? The, the lava map was. What's the lava map in uh, Star Wars That'd Episode Three, uh, where he chops up? It starts with an M, I think. What's that map? What's that? What's that co- world called? I don't know. Bro, Wait, you don't remember the the S- Mustafar S- or Mustafar? M- M- Mustafar, Mustafar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Logic got me, bro. Mustafar. That's like, when, when the they slutter, when they chop the off union. Anakin's legs. You were the chosen one. Come on, bro. You, you're the Star Wars guy. Sorry, man. I'm trying to get right, it. It's the know, Go ahead, bro. Zoe's, I, I was like, hey, look. I'll take care of Liam tonight. You go out with your friends. Enjoy yourself. You know, she's been working hard. So, um, you know, even though we got the podcast tonight, you know, multitasking. So, but he's maybe going back down. So, we'll see. But, right, um, no, it is. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you say Star Wars, man. I'm an idiot. I know. I know Mustafar um, for sure. So, it might be. It might be. Yeah, man. So, you know, hopefully if they do something to it, maybe change the map as well. Do something cool to it. Uh, Mordor. If, Someone said Mordor. <laughs> Mordor. <laughs> Mustard. Mustard fart. Dang. Mustardy. Uh, but the what I was saying is that hopefully the, the changes are, are more on the lines of, like, I feel like there are two kinds of changes. There's, like, the Apex Legends change to the map, where it's literally just a reskin, but then there's, like, the Fortnite change to a map where a meteor crashed into it and, like, this whole area of the map is just changed completely. If it's one of those things, that would be cool. But then, I don't know. Like, do you really want to just delete OG and uh, Esmir? Excuse me. Like, <sighs> okay, here's my thoughts. I love Esmir. A lot of people don't. I love it's it. It's probably one of the best ones, man. That was I, I awesome. Mean that. Um, but you know, maps changing is um, in right now. A lot of uh, BRs are doing that, so it's not something that's out of this world. Um, I, I I've talked about it on my stream. Um, this is not even related to I guess the podcast balance, but um, I think you keep the maps how they are. You make a new map. You take the eight years of knowledge that we have and you design a good map with bases that make sense and you focus on the center. And if you're going to update Indar, yeah, Alloys, Crown Area, if you're going to update anywhere, you just you can't update 400 bases. Okay, we get that. Who cares about this, the, the bases by the, um, the warp gates? You hardly see action there. If they get action, sorry. They're, they're, they're the same that they were before. If they suck, whatever. Or maybe there's a couple good ones. Focus on the center and maybe a couple bases on the away from that and make those great also map map locks the center base needs to be neutral okay anyway next. yeah man Sorry. And, I, and it's funny because if you think about like you brought up those examples and if you think about why those examples are good esimir and hassan are the best continents in my opinion because that center is one base that feeds all the people into it the tech plant is by far the most fun place i think to play on because the fact that it's a tech plant, there's a lot of different combat that can occur in it, whether it's tanks or vehicles or air, and they're all consolidated separate from each other. Like you mm-hmm. can't really get a tank into the into the tech plant, drive it up. Like that's impossible. It's, yeah, it's barely. Some, weird, some people, you know. Yeah, some people shit, can, but rare. on on first yeah. go, like you're not gonna get killed by like a BR-10 doing that. So infantry wise, you're able to fight inside of the tech plant, set up the beacons on top, fall in on primary, fight on the point, hold down grinder doors. Uh, and then tanks can drive around on that outside, but that middle pathway between the tech plant, the banana building, or the crescent, whichever you want to call it, and then the spawn room, they're all like almost 
it's almost like siloed away from that to to the extent that you're not going to get farmed by vehicles as much. You might die to a vehicle or two here and there, but overall, the majority of your kills and deaths are going to be infantry on infantry. And same thing with Nason's Defiance. There, there's three different areas where the points are. It's almost like three different bases, honestly. But the aircraft can fight each other in their own siloed environment. The tanks are almost like on the outside of it. And then the infantry are fighting along the inside. Now you think of Amorish or you think of Indar, it's like... You can throw let's vehicles look, on any of those bases. Let's address Vlaine here. These dudes have never played Unstable Esmir. Unstable Esmir, besides Hassan, Nason is probably the best center base. Yes, Thel is correct. It can handle the best large large quantities of players. And a lot of it is still infantry. Um, have you played at Lithcorp Central? Somehow that gets action and sometimes the ascent doesn't. That base is probably the worst top three at least bases in the game. Yeah. TI Alloys, have you played there from the north? Yeah, uh, I think the tech plant's okay, unstable. Yeah, uh, we'll move on. Yeah, and I think the geographical location of your warp gate doesn't affect how your ability to capture the base on when it comes to Hassan and it comes to Esimir as much as like an Indar. Yeah, um, yeah. Like coming coming to the tech plant from the north versus the south, or, or excuse me, the northeast, the northwest, or the south, it it doesn't really matter because the tech plant is set up in a way that you're gonna attack it almost every single time the same way. Um, but yeah, well, south side is... spawned by the gen is okay, and the north side spawned by the gen. Is... Like the, those... yeah, but I'm talking about like more like uh, when I think about like how me and you play it. Like there's there've been so many times that me and you have dropped on a tech plant where there's like 12 to 24 at it, and it's just like me, you, and anchors, and we we drop the beacon on it, and we start capping the base with just three of us, and right. we frag out. We have a good time regardless of if we cap it or not. Um, but like we usually feel satiated by that. There's not like there isn't a prowler blasting us. But yeah, like if you've right. ever tried to capture TI alloys or even the crown, sometimes even series, like those bases are literally impossible sometimes just because of the fact that of how poorly they're set up geographically. When you think about your avenue of approach affects your probability of capturing the base by a large degree. So the fact that you can't just have like one base that centers all the fighting, especially when the, the warp gates are unstable. Just it kind of ruins the continents, and I don't know. The ascent is not that fun of a base to fight out. The crown isn't that fun to fight at. Fun to fight at. I can't even talk, bro. Well, you know, for all this restriction on like the whole Jaeger sixty six and whatnot, like when it's dude, sometimes the fight is only at Tia Alloys. There might be a little one twelve over here, one twelve over there, but when there's like literally three four hundred players all at Tia Alloys, it's just not like. A, but, and it's not a good base. Like, Nason's, okay, okay, we, we can make something happen here. But that idea of, like, just cramming everyone at, at one base just sucks, dude. Yeah. If the base can't handle it. Even Nason's can be kind of like, ugh. you know? Yeah, if you get Northside spawn, fine. Or you have the base itself, fine. But anyway. Yeah, I and mean, I think a SWOT analysis, like, I think I said this last time, but literally just a SWOT analysis from, like, the devs, whoever's doing that sort of game design, that team with Rel. Uh, just looking at the strengths that they that are like associated with having a center base and then the weaknesses of having three center bases and then basing their decision making of like reforming either the two continents that we think are good or the two continents that they think are good. But regardless, some change overall, I think, would be beneficial just because of that. Like you, or you... make them neutral. That's so easy. It should be very easy to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only thing is, though, I think if you were to make, if you were to just take the three bases in the middle of Indar and the three bases in the middle of Amrish and then the three, the base in the middle of Esamir and the base in the middle of Hassan, and you made them all neutral, I think Indar and and Amrish would have the same thing. It should be, it would just be ghost capping in the beginning, and then it would be that same standstill. But I agree completely when it comes down to the center base of like Esamir or the center base of Hassan, because That's that would fair. make it yeah. so that everyone is attacking something rather than two teams attacking and then one team defending. Because another big complaint about from the the player base, and I think it's more from the newer players who are less experienced, are the hmm. I, I am VS and we have Nason's Defiance. Why are we always getting ganged up on by the TR and the NC? It's like, right, 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 right. if you made it neutral in the beginning, and then you also gave the opportunity for an outfit to capture it, because Alpha Resources and even if Outfit Wars might not be coming back, the fact, Outfit Resources are pretty important to people that want to call in their Orbital Strikes, their Citadel Shields, Bastions. So giving the person, the or the, excuse me, the outfit the opportunity to get more purple, as that is like the, the rarest resource, 
uh, that that would also be super beneficial and then you would have not only that ability to get your resources but you would have a really fun fight you get your outfit together that would be like oh the new continent locked the alert popped on the continent that unlocked too we got to get there so we can get credit for the middle base yeah instead of like oh let's log out because vs owns nascent's defiance let's let's log out nc we'll log on vs and we'll farm it yeah it, i mean you can still farm it i guess as like a neutral you know that's what i'm saying like it just creates a little bit more a little bit more structure yeah, and I think this actually segues us very well into our main subject today because we're kind of talking about map balance right now, but we're overall just kind of want to talk about balance in general. We have infantry balance, faction balance, game balance overall, vehicle balance, and then uh, a big one that a lot of people have been asking us to talk about, directive weapon balance. Um, so we kind of decided about map balance. I'm not sure. Do you feel like there anything? there's really anything else that would be like a main priority for them? Or do you think like that center area of all four of the maps right now is that main priority? Well, there's a lot of bad bases. And I get like uniqueness. But at some point it's like, okay, uniqueness and bad base design. Um, but a lot of the, you just got to think about where, like, I mean, there's, it's 2020. There's data on everything. There's data on, you know, how many large fights happen at every base, right? Or you could pull data on that. You could create data for that. And it's like, just focus. And I think the center is a good area, but like, just focus where the most majority of fights happen and work on those bases. You don't have enough devs to work on 400 maps. Mm -hmm. But who cares about the ones by the warp gate? Those have less traffic, right? We already have them. They're already there. If we can't, we don't have time to update all of them. Let's not worry about that. Let's just focus where the main fights happen and make those bases structured well like quartz ridge i'd hate spawning at quartz ridge when the fight's on the a point there's no teleporter anymore to get you to the north side so like if you die by a point you have to spawn and run 45 seconds all the way back there and god forbid there's a bolt somewhere hiding and snipes you in the head restart like you know what i'm saying like just think about bases and like okay these base tls usually has 96 plus people at it let's structure the base around that idea and it can still work you know smaller scale but let's build it around this idea of three factions fighting here you know what i mean I, that that's the approach that i would take to it yeah i think overall something that i thought was a cool idea from someone and the feasibility of it is completely up in the air but uh the my opinion on having limited employee resources in a, in a situation similar to planet side where you feel like the whoever their stakeholders and their excuse me their shareholders and investors in that company that are looking at like the stock of the overarching company itself um that's above uh whether it's daybreak or rogue planet whichever one we're they're they're operating as but uh it's all about the profitability and then if the game is isn't as profitable then the staffing will be less and then it's just like a never-ending cycle of like the game gets less money so there are less people salaries are lower etc but i feel like whenever a game has been in that situation where there's not enough people that are physically working on the project via staff then moving things to the community and trying to get the community to build things for them has been like that next follow-up thing so I, I, again i don't point, know the, dude. that's a really good point i don't modding's know like is, yeah modding is really big like i, I remember like in the fallout games uh, obviously bethesda has a lot of people but uh like games like fallout and and like skyrim a lot of those bethesda games had like a massive mod community um, but in my opinion, if there was some sort of way to get a map editor or a map creator out there and uh, to let you kind of build on bases and edit bases similar to like you would do like a forge in Halo and then have it so that you could upload your bases and have people look at it and then yeah, people play on it in like almost like a, right. in, a, in a segmented environment away from live and stuff like that. It would be cool because then the devs would That's at least have a point. starting point. And and I and there is the argument that like oh the 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 community is just gonna make garbage and I'm like just look at Halo like Halo three no look at uh, what's his name with all the guns and the armors bro he Doku he does great man he does great. oh yeah absolutely and I, there's like, there's so much talent map making and fuck it I'm sure people would do it without for 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 free or maybe they have a little bit of resources that they could give instead of paying a salary of somebody making all the maps you know what I mean you gonna have to take the wheel buddy I'm sorry all right go ahead man but yeah I think uh man Ace look Ace look busy busy tonight. Uh, just like making it so that a lot of the cr the community created content that's been curated via the community, meaning that the the community saw the thing, thought it was really good, and then started to help it and make it even better. So like Pill is a great example, Lane Smash and Server Smash are really great examples. Those were those were game modes, but now it'd be cool if we would be able to have that opportunity to like make the maps more cohesive to the things that we do as a community. So, and, and I, I want to go back to kind of like Halo where it's like Halo Forge 
was the the playground for creators to mess around on and a lot of people say oh like th th there's just absolute garbage it's like yeah 90 percent of the shit that they made in forge was just trash but that like five to ten percent of those gems that you played whether it was like jenga or those racing maps and circles there were so many community made maps for their commit their competitive mlg format Th those were all made via the community and then were promoted by the dev team in order to put it into the game and then allow for the competitive environment to happen. You got extremely symmetrical maps that were balanced along the lines of power weapons, spawns, and that was all again made by the community. So if there was a, even the slightest possibility, and again, I don't know anything about coding, unfortunately, I don't know anything about the code of the game, but on, when it comes to the feasibility of making it so that the community could assist in map development, as the community is full of the people that know honestly the most and the best about the game. We know what the core competency of the game is and what makes it better. That would be so, so great if we could just make our own maps and improve upon them for formats like Pill, like Lane Smash, like Alerts, Server Smashes, just stuff like that. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, balancing the maps comes down to balancing the bases individually and balancing them based on the geography meaning where you spawn geographically doesn't put you at less of an advantage or less of a disadvantage or more of an advantage, but also the fact that playing in those individual bases whenever you find yourself fighting there, each of them is a pleasure to fight at and isn't something where like, oh, there's a fight at insert base name here. I'm just going to get blasted by a tank. I'm just going to switch continents, go to a different fight or log off. Um, so that was, that was the first thing that we were going to talk about. Uh, and and something else I wanted I do want to bring up as well. Uh, we do talk about uh, or we do answer you guys' questions at the end of the podcast. So I'm gonna leave the link. Uh, I'm just gonna keep sending the link over and over just so you guys are able to do it. But feel free to leave us a question, whether it's about balance, the SMU stuff. We answer meme questions. Don't tell you if a guy said to send send memes though, but it's funny. So you guys can send meme questions. But we just kind of go through everybody's questions at the end and we talk to them. We answer them to the best of our ability. It can be personal stuff. It can be people have asked us about COVID. Like we answer that stuff. So this is just a podcast where we have fun and stuff. Um, but going on to the next thing, we we're going to talk about infantry balance. And I think infantry balance is, it's a touchy subject for certain people, just for the fact that the, 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 the different types of infantry players lead to there being so much dissonance when you're in that overarching role as being a developer. It's hard to be like, okay, we're going to listen to the heavy assault players, or we're going to listen to the infills. It's because there's so much dissonance and discourse going on between all the different people who main different uh that main different classes that there's always a complainer and there's always like a, this is what you have to do to be good at the game uh like i recall i think i was streaming like last week or something like that and uh like i was killing this bolter a couple times then he finally killed me and then he sent me a tell saying like stop playing easy mode heavy assault and it's like my mindset is you're playing bolter bro like that's easier in my opinion than playing heavy because depending on your playstyle, you can just sit there with your cloak on and then wait for someone to come by. You can one hit and kill them with a knife. You can blast them when they stand still with a sniper. There's a lot of there, there there's not there, there's a lot of arguments that could be made for both sides. And uh, interlude saying it's not, but I think it, it really is. Playing Bolter is so easy. <laughs> Heavy Supremacist at it again. And this is exactly what I mean. So when you look at infantry and you try to figure out how to balance infantry, it ends up being difficult because you're in this area where there are so many different cognitive biases from the fact that you've been playing a certain playstyle for so long that you think that this is what should or should not be the course of action for the developers. And at the end of the day, the developers are like, okay, hey community, what do you guys want? And everyone's like, nerf this, delete that, uh, do this. It's like, bro, we're just not gonna do anything. How about that? Uh, so it, it's it ends up being difficult, I think, for a developer to do something like that. Uh, and it, it ends up just being one of those things where it's our faults at the end of the day. Uh, they don't know what to do, and then I don't think they play their game as much. I only developed the game for my personal playstyles. Dang, bro. Yeah, I, I just I don't I don't I think it's so difficult to try and get community feedback on something like that, where it ends up being one of those things where how do you balance the game if you not only want to balance the game for yourself, but then for the other people. 
and it ends up being one of those difficult decisions of I will do this rather than doing that. I will do this course of action that benefits the the I don't know the the max players, and then at the expense of the engineer infill heavy assault. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna do this change that helps out this area, but then will actually be a detriment to all these other areas. So it ends up being pretty tough. Um. And then I'll end up, uh, oh, perfect timing, brother. Jeez, perfect. I hope so, man. Sorry, Bro, dude. It's, it's a He's heavy str- load to carry by yourself, dude. <laughs> He's struggling. Right it's there. a heavy load. Uh, but I'm talking about infantry balance, bro. I'm talking about oh. that, 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 dis- that dissonance that comes from the community whenever a decision wants to be made on whether it's making your infill better, uh, low, let's, let's, let's nerf the heavy assault, or let's buff a max suit. It's like, how do you balance the game when there's everybody who has this bias towards certain gameplay styles? And I, I'd like your feedback on it, too. Oh, man, dude. How you... <sighs> Jeez. I mean... <sighs> I think some of the, my biggest issues with the game are, look, okay, I don't like combined arms, I don't, but I get it, it's in the game, it is what it is. Um, w- w- no timers on, on, on vehicles, there's no, the resource revamp never came out from like seven years ago. Um, I, I get the idea of like combined arms, one faction versus another faction, you have the outfits, you, know, like you have like a bunch of reavers fighting a bunch of scythes, and like you have the air reavers fighting like the A to G reavers, so, like or the scythes, you know, you keep like this balance kind of going back and forth, this tug of war, same thing with the vehicles and the infantry and the maxes. But what happens, what reality is, is it's overpop. All the A to G is always an overpop. It's never helping us out on the ground, bro, when we're overpop. No, A to G comes in just to farm the fight and to do their thing, and there's none of this tug of war. It's just like, there's A to G, tanks, sunders with cobalts, maxes, overpop, um, everything on one side of the map, and then we have poor A flick and the boys coming out of the spawn room. You know, oh, you guys are farmers, you guys are farmers. It's like, no, bro, like, I also, like, I kill people on the point to cap the base so I can keep fi- fighting there. Like, I still play the objective, but, like, the issue is there is none – very rarely do you see both sides have equal balance in regards to combined arms. Combined arms in planet side is one side having everything and just decimating the other side. That's combined arms. That's mm-hmm. – there's no balance there. And the fact is like, yeah, well, we're eight years in. I don't know how you really structured around it besides revamping bases so A2G can't farm. Tanks can't be on the hillside shelling the spawn room. Like we need places where infantry can just have their own area, a.k.a. Jaeger. Mm-hmm. no meme but you know what i'm saying like that's my issue is the, the community just doesn't embrace things very well especially when you have three factions you know there's always pop pop's kind of just weird in how it works with three factions um I, I don't know man i don't know how you balance it we're so we're so far into it but those are my issues is it's, it doesn't work well it's not like oh there's a bunch of size up there so we're gonna get a bunch of guys and pull reavers like that does happen every so often but it's something that's very difficult to facilitate when it's already snowballing down a lattice line. And, you know, I, the infantry combat balance to me is perfectly fine besides Max is kind of stonewalling anything. And then once Pop goes up and you kind of facilitate Maxes with engineers and, and medics that can heal them, and Maxes get repped like that, bro, even when they, when they rep themselves. And it kind of prevents any type of push. It just kind of shuts down a fight, and it becomes a stalemate of, oh, I shoot you. Oh, you got my shields. I'm going to hide back over here. Oh, I got your shields. You're going to hide over there. Oh, I killed you? Oh, the medic got you. Oh, I killed seven people. I almost cleared out the room, but there's one medic, and you got to resonate off, and they're all back up, and I got to reload? Oh, okay. Yeah, that that happened to me. Uh, I remember I, I actually got so mad, bro. I cleared out an entire room. It was at what's that? I forget what it's called. It's that one base on Indar. It's near uh, that. I think it's next to Sunger Am Station. But uh, it, it, it I, just, I cleared out everyone in the triple, right? I, I went in, bro. I went in, bro. Aim on fleek, bro. Like, pa, pa, pa. Just all headshots blasted everyone. And then I just hear, boom. And then everyone stands up again and just blasts me. And I'm like, bro, I just cleared out the whole room. They threw one nade and brought everyone back. So it's like, <sighs> it's the classic. You have four bullets left. There's seven guys getting res. And it's like, do you reload? But you know you can't get the reload off unless they're all idiots. <laughs> it's like, I, if I <laughs> land all the shots, I'll be able to. <laughs> like, oh, dude. And then that's, and then one person can have four resonates. It, 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 that part is frustrating. It's like, even when, you know, I put my balls over my shoulder and I go in there to clear it out, right? A lot of the time, it, it and, and that's why, I don't know, I feel like veterans like or elite infantry players, you know, are so disconnected from the community because it's like, dude, we have to go through, so, we have to wade through so much shit just to do what we want to do. Um, and 
so I don't know that that part is just frustrating. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it was Lex's stream way back in the day. Maybe it was somebody from DA. I just remember, I think it was Lexo just talking about like, you know, oh, look at all these shitters. Like we're cutting them down and then boom, one resonate, cut them down, two resonate, <laughs> three. It's like, it's like, fuck it, dude, we'll go to seven resonates. And then at some point you're going to have to reload. At some point we're just going to overwhelm you. And like yeah. that part is just, you know, and I mean, D was talking about it, you know, little grug, big grug, this, that, that. But I mean, I, I get that I can kill a lot of people at a fight. But what about the players that can't, that are also spawning in at this base and getting absolutely shit on? And they're not good at the game. Like, no one likes, likes to talk about this part of the game. It's like, oh, Aflix here, or, or, or Lex is playing. We're, we're just going to overwhelm him with this pop. But it's like, dude, there are other people that are garbage at the game that are, are spawning in here and trying to defend it or play the objective or um, play tactfully or play whatever and they're getting shit on no one wants to talk about those players though it's always it's always the elites versus uh the, the not elites in, in this pop imbalance of like farming mm -hmm. and all this but no there's other players that are at these bases too like come on now uh, and i just don't like that interaction sometimes um and it's hard because we're so far down the rabbit hole now. It's like almost like you can't even do things without going to Planet Side Three. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Or there's, I don't know. It's it's frustrating to, to think about and talk about balance because it's limited in what yeah. I think they can actually change and do. Yeah, and there's there's just so much to, like, I, I don't even know how to like. I, I don't even know how like one would approach changing things on a large scale in a game like this just because of the history of the game and the amount of things that either will or will not mess around with things when you change one thing. Like, if I turn this one knob, are those seven knobs over there just going to pop off? So it's like, I don't yeah. I don't even know what I want to touch first. But then even if I knew, I was like, okay, we're going to do this thing. There's that possibility that, like, changing this thing will make me need to change, like, 17 things. Which then have, like, a, a, I don't even know, like, another shattering tree effect. Where all these other branches of, like, 98 things I have to do over here. So it's so difficult to not only balance the game or remove things from the game. Just because of the age that I think a lot of the times, the, the argument... In Internally must be one of those like we do want to see reform in this sort of thing where like teams aren't able to just throw resonates over and over on a base but it's just not feasible therefore we should probably leave it for the future project that we're working on etc so well it's, just to it's tough tell what rail was saying in chat dude he said you know right revive meta has been here since day one I, I hear or day zero i hear you but the thing that really pissed me off like a couple months ago was like an outfit like B Way, right? You know, and I, I think they had like 60 players on. It was right, right around Outfit Wars time, and they were like linking up with Prey, and then they had some Elway, but it was like 72 players, and they were saying, like, okay, sometimes you don't have all the players at one base. Okay, whatever. They were all there at the tech plan, or a large majority of them. When a good outfit with 2KD players, or and then you have mixed in like good players on top of that, start taking something like the revised meta. Like, I think of, um, what was MLG? The good outfit in MLG. The one only, only good outfit that shot on everybody. Um, shoot. That Elusive was in. Uh, was it Nuck? Do you remember? Nuck. Like, you take a bunch of good people, and then you throw you throw pop on top of them, like 60 players, and then you put them in a fight, and then you absolutely crush living souls out of dog shit players with pop and using these things that, like, a lot of players, just, a lot of good players just don't use, because um, you're prepping for something like Outfit Wars, or whatever the excuse is. And then you realize how broken or tough these things really are. When AOD does it, cool. You know, they're not popping up from the res and like thinking, okay, we're gonna start fighting. No, you just cut them down. But what B way when there's seven B way popping up, it's like fuck, dude. Most of these players are at minimum two KD. So it's like that's where it gets really dicey for me. Or you see a good player in a max, right? I mean, AC, you know, or the the, the super platoons that we made back in the day, and we're like, we'll, we'll show people what maxes are like when you you know when you want to try hard them. It's like thank God that like people don't do that all the time. But when I came back and the in the directive uh, was going, all the maxes were here, and we talked about this what a podcast or two ago. And I see you, Slendy, like I see all these fucking like great ass players and maxes. I'm thinking like, oh my god, are you kidding me right now? Like, there's no way I deal with you guys. You know, I don't have like a, a super squad behind me either. It's just me. And I think about that, and I'm a good player, and I think about a bad player. Okay, which is there's a lot more of them. That's just natural, right? Like, it's not good for them either. Like, that's my issue. Is like, thank God that most 
good people or good outfits that are left don't do these things because it's i think it's it's it creates fights that are unwinnable or unfun like there's no point in me pushing grinder there's two doors where most of my fucking faction is going in because they're they're not good players they don't understand the game they're new they they're just they see like the, the closest point and they're just falling and they're getting farmed like that's not good that's not tug of war right yeah, agreed. that's why I don't like to see. It's like I can kill like four or five players and then I die. It's like, and then we have this like back and forth. Like, nope. Oh, there's a max with four engines on him. Oh, we killed the max because he got C four on him. Oh, he got rest. And then we go back to the square one of like this peaky game of like, oh, you got my shields or oh, okay, let me get a little bit of reps. Let me let me go back from the door. Somebody else can take my place. Like, those are the things that just can get really frustrating and, and, and bogged down. And luckily, bases flip pretty quickly so like you can get around that or you know zerg kind of like dwindles out or you finally get enough people to defend against it but um i'm used to that i've almost become numb to it but i think about a new player summit 1g bro i just think about these people spawning and just getting absolutely massacred yeah like we were who had he had the whole b-way defense force on him and he still got just trashed on over and over because when you're big like that's just the mmo vibe though i don't blame i don't blame the mechanics but Regardless of whether Planet Side had no tanks, no planes, it was just infantry. I feel like the same thing would have happened to him. Like the, everybody, he has like that, that, fifty thousand okay, yeah, viewers. Yeah. It's like he's gonna get blasted. That okay? Maybe we tuck that aside. But like my thing is like as infantry, like you have a chance with skill to kill more of them, right? If there's seven maxes and they're spread out, I cannot kill them. Mm-hmm. Or there's seven tanks, or there's seven. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not saying you delete these things or whatnot, but I, I just think the way that they the the domains interact is 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 weird the fact that like the archer is in a, is in a secondary when they, they, there's just no like balance i feel like there's like eight of you can just farm the fuck out of you and there's very like okay you got a decimator shot off and you killed it good job mm-hmm. but then he just repulls it <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like it's just a weird like and we've gotten so f- eight years into it now that it's hard to bring some things back or try new things or bring back a resource system or bring back timers on vehicles or, or, or whatnot it just feels like everything's free to do and, and to pull Mm-hmm. And I went on a tangent. Holy shit! Let me no, chill that, out. that actually does go really well. I think into like the next thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to weapon balance, and then the the what's the word like weapon balance, and then how it gets attributed into like faction balance, and almost like faction. I think the word is like personality, or like every faction was marketed to have like a flavor, where it's like oh, TR is high bullets, uh, high fire rate. NC is low, 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 low fire rate, but really high damage. VS was like lasers and stuff. But I, in my, I come from this mindset of wanting, like, I said it last podcast, extreme balance. I want every faction to have all of the same weapon models that all of the other factions have. So I remember this would be like, 143 uh what's like the fire rate for the MSWR and the and the Orion I forget bro I don't even know the fire rate of the Gossaw The Gossaw is 500 I, I just I don't know any of this shit Yeah so that having exact same weapons available for all three of the factions and just dumping out the uh the what's the word the the faction flavors and just really favoring the side of extreme weapon balance is my opinion, bro. If I could have, if I could have a a Orion MSW on NC, or like a like a Gauss saw anchor on VS or TR, I would I would be a happy camper because then it's like I I don't and this this kind of goes back to the six v six stuff too. And we talked about this last time where it's like oh people attribute like oh we're we're NC we're gonna lose because we're like lower fire rate or something. Like this is like the not like the top tier players but like the the more like lower yeah. tier uh, players that are playing like six v six. They're like oh I'm not gonna be able to not gonna be able to frag as much because I don't have my MSWR. I have to use like the NC weapons that I'm not used to. It's like that completely throws that out the door completely. And I love that idea or that possibility of having every single faction have weapons that are already tried and tested. Like the Orion's been in the game since the start. I, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure the MSWR's you know, been I in don't... the game since the start. For 6v6, sure. I wouldn't mind that on Jaeger, the option. But like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. It doesn't bother me on live because I could just play my TR character or my VS character. I do like a little bit of like, I don't know, faction loyalty or whatever you guys are going to meme on me. But I, I don't mind. And, and like, we're getting closer and closer to that with, with the, the amount of guns that we have. Like, there is less and less difference almost. But I get what you're saying, though. I mean, it, 
but but I mean, are you talking about Jaeger specific? Or are you talking about on live as well? I'm talking about both. I think okay. I think having the because I I think the biggest argument is, and I I hear it uh, I think a lot from from players who are they're more on the side of understanding that games have like meta weapons and then other weapons that are just variations for situational uh like certain situations that would be useful for them um but i think having more weapons that are along the lines of meta weapons adds to the variety of the game like if you just had like a big dump of all these weapons that you already know are tried and tested like the Orion is a balanced weapon, the MSWR is a balanced weapon. They wouldn't be guns that are like, holy shit, what the fuck? Like, because they're they're literally they would just be copy pastes of the the weapons damage model, the the fall off of the damage, all of the stuff that's already on the in the game would just be moved over to like a different model of like cosmetically of the gun to look more like NC or look more VS, etc. Uh, you know, I guess it's not a bad idea. Um, you know, I guess there is a lot of this like, you know, VS has no bullet drop. Like, there's just like this like weird like. Oh yeah. I guess from uh, like newer players or players that just don't understand the game, and like that's their excuse, right? Um, so uh, you know, I guess I, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to it. I'm just so used to it w w the way that it is. Um, can we circle back though, as possible? Yeah, go ahead, bro. Real quick. I mean, real, real touched on two things. One, I think, about, and I don't, I didn't, don't realize these things when I was just playing the game because I was immersed. I was a point one KD, you know, shit lord out there at the warp gate, you know, leading the platoons around, right? Um, but dude, libs and all that shit used to be actually it did used to be actually way worse. It used to be way way worse than it is now, and it's still bad now. Um, so there has been some positive changes. I I will I will I will admit to it. We don't want to shit down you guys' neck the whole time. Um, and and I talk about it all the time on my stream, dude. You can get rid of orbital strikes. You can get rid of bolters on the hillside. You can get rid of you know one shot you in the head. You can get rid of max. You can get rid of tanks and A to G. Me and anyone else would find something to complain about, and that's just the nature. That's what we're here to do. That's what we do. We have I mean, a podcast. We're human. We just, yeah, yeah, we're human. So there's we would never be satisfied, real one hundred percent. We would not be. Doesn't mean that there's not a lot of changes that I think that would benefit the game and make it better and attract more players and be more fun and people would play for longer and yada 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 um but you are correct there there's there's no pleasing people and mm -hmm. you know uh yeah so it, just want to touch base on that but uh again a lot of changes that sh i think should be made or, or tried or um you know we're talking about having uh, whatever uh, that's that's what i'm gonna pause on we yeah go and i think to... i think it's funny too because it's oh, like it's to, to what i was saying like the, the the saying like that sounds boring and how does giving every faction a copy pasted weapon bring more variety but it's like all of you're you're literally you're you're limiting variety by not allowing everybody to use everything you that the what? game has to offer you know what i think and someone just said it in chat nerf beetle juice okay thanks meme whatever but i think this is what ties into your point which also is another topic of ours. I don't know if we're there yet, but um, the directive weapons or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it was something like the beauty and like when it was fucking OP as fuck. I was thinking, I don't have, I don't have that. I have a fucking gun that I have to switch the ammo type to damage the vehicles. That's what I got. Yeah. So, and I was like, I would love to have a Beetlejuice juice and like dunk dunk city with it, but I never got that opportunity, and I wasn't playing VS at the time. So like, you know, then you got a farm for it, and it's like, do I even want to play VS? And I eventually got it, but it got nerfed, right? So it's like, I kind of get where you're coming from. It's nice to have the Beetlejuice juice on all three factions, and like for those faction loyalists, they actually have something to um, compete with or or to farm with or whatever you you know you want to you want to talk about. But I think yeah. that that makes me think about your point and actually agree with it like 150 percent now yeah um, I, it's it's one of those things it, it's it's not you're not making it you're not giving less variety by offering more options and right. what i'm saying is by copy pasting you're ensuring that there won't be an adverse effect on balance in the game by making completely new damage models that could potentially just break the game like like the watchman with the firestorm implant before the nerf was absolutely insane the best gun in the game by far fastest fire rate instant kill if you get all the headshots like that's broken but if you take tried and tested weapon models when it comes to damage and you basically just reskin them to offer each faction alternatives to the things that the factions have i think we're past the whole concept of oh every faction has certain uh, what's the word? Variety or excuse me, flavors. Where it's like, oh, I'm going to play NC because I'm 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 wanting that slow fire rate, high damage flavor. I think at this point, it's we play we play factions based on the sense of who has the fights available. 
And it's like, I'll literally log into the first account I have on the top of my list just to see who has those fights. And it's like, right. if I log into my NC and I see, oh, we don't really have any fights, but oh, purple's popping off. They're getting attacked by both TR and NC at the same time. It's instant log off and then hop into the next thing. That's why I, and it would never happen, but that's why I want like two factions would be ideal for that because it doesn't matter if you log NC or TR, you're going to have a fight, right? Um, but in real, you should just. You were on Deeg's podcast, so I mean, you just had to be on ours. Which is, we we need to have it at some point, and then we can answer. We can we can ask the hard hitting questions, um, and you can give us all the re- the rebuttal and safety. Um, and I think it would be a good thing. So if you're interested, let us know. But um, to, to address your question, there will always be meta in any game. There will always be meta. It doesn't necessarily mean it's too strong. I think about Beetlejuice release, and it being so fucking that was it was too strong. I think it was too strong. And then it kind of got put into a place where I feel like it has a nice niche. Okay. It's not too, too strong to where it's OP, but it it might be meta, right? Or Orion might be meta. There's a couple of different options. And same thing with the anchor or the Gossaw. And I think there actually are some options, Um, but there will always be meta, the the most used thing or the best option or, or several best options, depending on your play style. I think that's okay. I don't think it means it's too strong though. Yeah, and I just dropped a, a question because I think uh, the the question that uh, Rel sent in the chat is actually a pretty good question. It's, uh, do you think the meta weapons are the meta weapons because they're too strong? So I just and, talked uh, about No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm saying <laughs> oh, I'm putting that in the chat for a poll, bro. Uh, bro sh- relax, sh- relax. Me, bro. Take the shot, bro. Take the shot. Relax, relax. So um, I, I think, and, and there's like a little bit of di- like disagreement, I think, in the chat too, where it's... Uh, uh, not everybody answered, but like eight people say no, and then uh, four people say yes. And I, I, I obviously, I think I just didn't give enough time for everybody else to respond since we have a good amount of viewership right now. But um, I, I, I don't, I don't think so either. I think each weapon has usefulness in different situations. I think there's there's disagreement and agreement in the in the conversation of weapon balance, where the the meta weapons that are good at everything aren't necessarily good at everything. They're just when you min max everything and you look at what really makes every every weapon useful and that's like reload time reload uh excuse me reload time magazine capacity damage damage fall off and fire rate there there are guns that min and max enough to the point that they become the meta weapon and meta weapons change like we saw this from the anchor to the gauss saw like you switching was probably the biggest thing that anyone's ever seen when it comes to a weapon loyalist who has their entirety the entire of the entirety of your twitch is based (laughs) off of the anchor and then you switch killers. to the gauss saw. Oh my gosh, let's not even talk about my Twitch. Let's let the, let's let the, let's let it ride out. Anchor. Oh gosh, dude. I, I the thing is like when I was setting it up, I was like, what, what am I gonna use? I was like, oh fuck it. I, I use the anchor all the time. I'll just make everything based off of that. And it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a little cringe, but it is no, what it is. it's not. It's not cringe. <laughs> it's more of just like this. Just shows like the fact that meta weapons can change, and then there are weapons that kind of change based off of what you're trying to do. Because I used the promise, and I liked using the promise. And I think that's the LMG. I might be getting this wrong, yeah, but I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah, yeah, it's an LMG. the promise is the one with the really big mag capacity. It's one of the higher fire rate uh, weapons. I couldn't tell you, bro. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Oh, dude, you it's can get 150 song. bullets on that V. You sit there and you just, you start taking people down. You don't even have to burst fire it because it like, I think the cone of fire goes down the more you hold down the trigger. It's I a mean, weird. Anything's viable in life. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. A but uses I'm the just saying, yeah, well, absolutely. But it's one of those things where you're like, hmm. Okay, each weapon is useful in different situations, but the tried and true best weapon that I'm going to use most of the time is this one gun. But offering more variety in the sense of making the meta weapons available across the board just in different variations when it comes to cosmetically... That would be, that's just how it is. That's how most games operate at this point. Yeah, that's fair. That's so fair. That's fair. It'd be like, um, imagine like you're, you're playing Call of Duty and you can't use your M4 <laughs> because you're on the, the what's it called? The yeah. Russian side. You have to use the AK. Um, you're just getting shit on. You're like, oh God, we're not going to win this one. Yeah. Um. And Fuck. then uh, uh, just another thing, just, uh, you know, we're just going to keep throwing over this link to the questions leave us a question or kind of chats are going by a little fast so if we miss what you're saying in chat you can leave us a question and then we can almost guarantee that we'll go over it and talk to you about it um but yeah, and dude the youtube's down just subscribe to it free or, or don't or unsubscribe to it i guess leave that to the end bro leave that to the but end what if what if we, this is the most this is when we're gonna have the most viewers so we might as well talk about it now what, if we would do it at the end and people start dropping off then it's the worst true time true true yeah yeah check out the youtube channel a flick you just look him up on youtube he's the first thing that pops up it's literally below the channel we could just, you can oh yeah oh yeah click that i don't even know man where is it oh there it is click it bro 
Well, here, I got you with the link spam. We bro. upload our podcast there. Anchors is, I think, working on, still working on, but he's back in the saddle working on the, the Twitch highlight. Um, so it's going to be a, a mix of the two. Right now, it's mostly podcasts, but. Um, and we're kind of experimenting it's something new. I haven't done YouTube. We haven't done podcasts before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never done n- never done Twitch highlights, aka anchors. Um, so it's new, and we'll hopefully get better at it, or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just continue sucking. So up to you. Yeah, anchors, unpaid slave labor. Same with Shocker, bro. We're all uh, we're pro- me and anchors are production. We're we're I can't creation. You, but I, bro. I can't afford to pay him something. True. That's yeah. You can't afford to pay me either, though. So. But yeah, follow me on Twitch too, bro. I'm out here struggling. Our names are up here, but you're well, already on Apex channel. You have to have a thousand subscribers in what forty thousand hours or something crazy to even monetize it. Let alone you need about four hundred bazillion uh, views to make money on it. So, um, true. But yeah, bro. It's it's our YouTube technically together in a way. Yeah, and I don't I don't I don't post my I don't I don't post my YouTube because it's music and stuff. No, I, I promote oh, that so, separately. Well, why that's Shocker's wall. Sans that he had a booger on it, bro. My wall clean as hell, boy. Yo, you talking about this booger right here, bro? This John right here? That's a spider, bro. That little schmoosh, bro. Let me just... Wait here, I got like a napkin or something I can put on it. I don't know. Uh, but, yo. We can hop into the next the next thing, actually, because we were kind of touching on it a little bit. And that was directive weapon balance. And I don't know if we disagree or agree on this. But we'll just hop onto like the biggest one. It's the VS directive weapons, the 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 battery cooldown, and st- basically unlimited reserve Heat. ammo. I don't think they should be nerfed, bro. I think they're fine. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, what Dudas was on some well, who what podcast was he on or some th- shit? What was Dudas? Oh, on? it was um, the the Arch- the community feedback RC Arch- thing. No, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, pre nerf. Beetlejuice was really str- it was strong man it was strong I mean we I remember um Harvester <laughs> yeah good old Harvester man uh his stream and just just dunking people back to the nether man um and that was a little busted back then but I think it's it's received a nerve it's in a good position right now I don't it's not oh it's just not OP um you know it's very easy for someone that always plays NC or always plays TR that it, you know, doesn't understand the game to like blame that but not that even, not that many people even use the Beetlejuice man it's like <sighs> there's so many trash players that use the Beetlejuice and you just I mean sometimes you one hand dunk them sometimes you tomahawk them I mean you know what I mean it, just they're just more people to, to dunk on but um, no it's not busted bro it's not sorry Got yeah I, I think this so the we're talking about variety in the sense of giving more options to the to to each faction by taking that variety away from the concept of you play this faction for this type of weapon style but more i think cosmetically so that you have really a, a, like a solid amount of balance but i think when it comes to the directive weapons those are earned things that i think should have that flavor and the concept of having like the cooldown to the beetlejuice once you get it it's one of those things that you use and then you want to keep using not only because it's viable but also because you earned it it's, right, you, right. you put so much effort you got all these kills and i know there are a lot of like infantry elitists too that are like kind of in the chat right now too and i would consider hey, rise them, up, baby. Let's uh, go, baby. <laughs> all the all the pill gang uh, and all the players and stuff like yeah, that dang. but it, it's i do think that for the average player, getting 1,160 1, kills on five different weapons is a Very big cool. accomplishment. For the average player, that is huge. Like that, that involves playing the game more, like past BR thirty. And a lot well, of people. That's actually a good point. And a lot of people don't do that. Reflect that. Well, yeah. weapons should reflect that achievement, right? Mm-hmm. And you don't. I think that's what you're saying. It's like imagine like if I played, I had to buy and I had to play five guitars and master each of them. And then when I did it, I got like this, like this shiny sixth guitar, and I just kept it in the box because it wasn't as good as like this right. one or something. Very good point. It would be like it would be kind. Of, it's like it's underwhelming. So I think getting the Beetlejuice is like it, it's it's the pinnacle of what I think a directive weapon should be. A lot of people think it's the opposite. It's it should not be like that at all. It should be nerfed, bring it down, make it exactly the Orion, but only cosmetically. But I think that it being more viable, but in the sense of more like something that's passive in the sense of ammo reserve rather than me having an extended mag or having a higher fire rate that's effective TTK, having that reserve ammo 
and having that cooldown is just one of those things where it's like I feel rewarded that I did the thing and then now I keep playing the game because I earned this thing and I'm going to go after something else. It's so. a fun me- it's a fun mechanic, dude. It mm-hmm. is it, and it it, it, it it it's strong in its own right, but I don't think it's too strong. And it, it does give you like the option of like yeah, this is a good tool to uh, that I can use, right? And the Ryan is still very strong and I think it it's in a good place right now. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, like the God's like, you know, somebody in chat said it's fun. Yeah, it's it's okay. okay, and I think that's what gets us into talking about those two other guns, the butcher and the godsaw. And again, uh, I think it's funny because me and Aflick we play heavy assault. Okay, so whenever we bring up an example about this, this is more of like a PSA, just because I, I've been seeing people call us like heavy assault elitists and stuff like that. But not plant side arena chat. Relax. <laughs> so we uh, we we use this as an example of what we think would be good as an example to apply to everything else. So we're just using it because we have the most experience as heavy assault but taking that concept of giving that 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 extra flavor it's like you know the, the Fresh, salt bay yeah. putting that putting that little bit of spice right on top of the gun Damn, to make baby. it better oh, bro, you know. <laughs> he out here like wait what <laughs> i'm not flexing Damn. again bro last time i did that i got embarrassed bro <laughs> i'm dead bro uh <laughs> um so the um Adding that extra flavor to the butcher and the godsaw to make them like the Beetlejuice in the sense of you feel rewarded and you use it a lot. Like, I think if you look at literally any player that has the Beetlejuice and you see their hours with it, it shows just statistically that it is one of the most used weapons in the game when it comes to directive weapons. Just because you earned it and it's viable and you feel good when you use it. So if you follow that same principle with the other directive weapons where you earn it, it's viable and you feel good when you use it depending no matter how you get to that point and it falls under the uh what is the word it falls under that the 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 ceiling of what we would call game balance like you don't want it to surpass like something that's game breaking and i will forever right, use from right. now on the watchman with firestorm um uh, pre-nerf <laughs> so as long as it doesn't surpass that then i think you're golden and those directive weapons will not only make it so that people will use them more, but then people will want to play more to get the thing. And th- at the end of the day, that's what we want to see from the game. We want to see more people playing. And I don't think the game necessarily has much of an issue when it comes to getting people to play. We've seen thousands and thousands of people try out the game because it's free and it's interesting and it's unique. Yeah, but, plus I don't want to be good at a dead game because then I look like an idiot. Yeah, well... <laughs> Yikes. Uh, but <laughs> we're literally doing that right now. <laughs> uh, but it, it it's I think it's more of a retainment issue. It's one of those things where we need to see... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, bro. <laughs> Damn, I got a throw from Lean Moment, bro. That's embarrassing. Go ahead. Bro, you shouldn't have said that. That could have just been a logo, bro. We could have just thought that was like a swoosh. Uh, Under Armour hey, Under Armour Nike Anchors. collab. Anchors. Handle this, bro. Yeah, edit that out. To, edit that out. Delete all the comments, by the way, that say it. Um, but yeah, I think just giving, giving the opportunity, honestly, you said the throw up thing. I forgot what we were talking about, bro. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll fill in here. You know, just to kind of back up your whole, like, cause I, at first I was like, dude, no, keep faction specific things like the way they are. Cause it makes the game unique. Yada, yada. And then I think about the six months of Zoe Max <laughs> and I think about all those poor players I used to play back and just quit the game. And I remember trying to recruit and it was just like, you'd lose so many players because it was like and then all the leadership from nc like quit and it was like i was it was good because i got to like pull everything in and like i got to um get all those players but like literally so many people quit because nobody else had access to the zoe max it was awful it was awful and i think about like everyone having access to the zoe max and like keeping balance i guess in that way zoe max would still be broken for everybody and would have sucked suck to go against the maxes uh thanks for drinking water almost two hours into the podcast wow man bravo um but the fact and then like everyone would like quit and then go over to vs because it's like oh we'll just play vs and 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 even the the bad players and the good players people like went over to vs because they didn't want to fight against the zoe max and um i think about that being so game breaking for half a fucking year dude and i think to your point though is if everyone had zoe max i mean at least people would have probably stayed on their factions you know what i mean and it wouldn't have been as game breaking but mm-hmm. um Maybe that was a terrible example. Who knows? I think using a broken game mechanic that is only available to one person and then saying... I hope your your point wasn't to just give it to everybody instead of removing it from the game. 
Because I think if somebody misheard you, then they would, that would be, I don't think that's a good idea. But I think if it was one thing that was kind of given to everyone and then was removed, not because one faction was overpowered, but just because everyone across the board was just using the same thing. Yeah, maybe I miss, don't get me wrong, the experience would have been bad, okay? And it, and it took six months to remove is, is incredible, incredible to me. Uh, I think about that being applied anywhere else in any other job and it scares me. Mm-hmm. I think about my like working in, in insurance and claims and like they're like we're gonna give you 500 claims a day for six months. Oh, it was broken, but we're just gonna leave it that way. Yeah, I fucking would have quit, bro. Um, but that uh, maybe was a terrible example. I'm I almost no, I almost turn quit. Over to you. Go ahead. I almost quit my last job because of something similar. It was just you know just too much. Yeah. But I'm glad but yeah, my job was like a move management. on to the next thing. It is yeah, what it is. horrible management, bro. Um, so yeah, I think overall for directive weapon balance. It should just I, I kind of follow like those three those three pillars that I kind of said. It's 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 a challenge to get, but it's a pleasure to use, and you feel re- and you want to keep using it. And it's 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 almost like it's not only a cos- a cosmetic thing where you're like, hmm, this looks cooler because it's shiny, but it also just gives you some that little salt bay, uh, l- little little flavor, little spice on top to make it just a little bit better, but not game breaking. Well, here's a good example. Guardian or whatever that dog shit weapon is. You grind, you grind, you grind, you get it. And then it's like, oh, it's dog shit, so I'm not going to use it. And it's like, okay, I've grinded for this. I'm not going to use it. What's my, like, you have to find something else. Instead of like, I, I grinded for this, it's actually a little bit better. I like it. It's fun. It has this cool, quirky thing to it or whatever. And I'm going to keep using it. And I'm going to like, and like, that's my new thing. I got it. I'm going to use it. Now I got it. And like, oh, I'm going to throw it up on the old directive or I'm going to throw it up on the old, like, your trophy wall or something because now i have it it's like no let's make these things useful so when we get there we can keep using them and not just like feeling like we hit our accomplishment we peaked and that's it and now it's like okay we're just gonna quit the game because we got our guardian or whatever you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah it's and i think this actually would go really this actually is a really good segue i think into our last uh aspect of balance that we were going to talk about and that's faction balance and i do Overall, do you think the, your your opinion on factions should be cosmetic variation or gameplay variation? And I mean, when I say or, I mean both. Because it'll always be cosmetic in the sense of, like, you know, VS has, you know, technological alien-looking weapons. Yeah, it's your butts, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but do you think that the faction balance should be based on the faction's nuances or do you think we're past that because my i think i've made my opinion pretty clear i think everybody should have the same weapon models like every other game kind of does and it's just a matter of what do you want to use and then it just looks different because it's your faction i think you convinced me i'm on your team now man I, i think about like i think about like the zoe max i think about like Something like the Beetlejuice and like when it was really, really strong and like everyone was like kind of leaving like the good players from the other factions were kind of leaving to go over to BS to use it and grind for it because it was so good. Like or like an implant. An implant, like let's say Firestorm is like even more busted. It was like, okay, hundred percent fire rate increase. And it's like, oh, well only VS can get it. You know, I think about something like that and like that just for the people on the other side, that sucks. And that's and you don't want people leaving those factions to go to this faction to use this OP or stronger thing, right? So like, yeah, you should be probably releasing all these things to everyone. And like, I've definitely changed my stance on that. Um, and I mean, where does the faction loyalty come from? It's not because oh, I have two to hundred damage, two hundred damage weapons or whatever. Um, it's like no, because like that's where your friends are, or that's where your outfit is, or whatever. That's where the focus should be on. on faction loyalty as cringy or meme as that is not because you have op weapons or strong stuff or, or, or only access to this one thing no I, so i cosmetically man all right man yeah i i overall and and there's i think uh, uh lex kind of says like that's not gameplay variation you guys confuse that with idiots making decisions uh i think we're talking more on the sense of like is the variation in the sense of just cosmetically the things work the same, they just look different in order to promote game balance? Or is it, do we really want to to favor the side of everybody gets their unique flares and flavors? And if you want to play this, then if you want to play this type of gameplay or this type of variation of gameplay, you have to go to this faction. And when you're looking at an MMO like this, it, it, it really messes with the numbers and you have to kind of deal with this faction pop uh, cues where everyone's playing NC. I think recently, like these past two or three weeks, we've been seeing like Emerald NC has like 40, 38% uh, world pop. And well, it's dude, like, it, I had to bring it up. Zoe Max, again. Sorry, finish your point. No, no, that was it. I was just going to get your opinion on that. 
I think there was before there was a there was never early on in the game right there was no like f- there was no like oh there's too many people on your faction because wasn't like VS like sixty percent pop or something for like the during the Zoe Max season and they finally implemented something to where like you couldn't just you know at the end of the alert before the alert ended everyone would go to like the winning side back in the day because there was no restriction on how many people could be on a faction I'm pretty sure during Zoe Max everyone was like fuck it I don't want to fight against this I'm gonna go to VS and play on VS. And so, like, it was, like, literally, like, 60% VS pop on the server mm-hmm. for six months. It was terrible. And then they, they, they did add the the um, the population queue or whatever you want to call it, and, and that worked better. But it, that proves your point, though. Yeah, when some other faction has something that others don't that is worth it, people will go to the other faction, mm-hmm. leaving yeah. the other ones in a shithole. Yeah, man. So, overall... Um... We just kind of talked about balance, bro. I thought that was I thought that was good. We we've been taking more of a laxed approach on this podcast. We're Dude, not... for going in and winging these, bro. I'm actually really happy we're with we're, and Liam crying twice and good. Um, we did good, man, for for winging it. Yeah, man. Nice. I think that's fun. And uh, we're just gonna go into the Q and A portion now. No, I think it was fun, bro. <laughs> I thought it was. I mean, you left me to you left me to 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 fight with the wolves, bro. I'm sorry. I had Liddy like in chat. I had Saiyan oh, in chat. Ooh. Slendy Zyros. The chat's kind of going fast, man. Lex, Rel, bro. I'm just getting... Got, 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 got. Interlude, Yasper, bro. It's hard out here. It just sounded like when Zoe sometimes call, calls me when she's coming home from work. She's like, yeah. oh, what are, you, what are you doing? And, you know, she's like not giving it two shits. I'm like, oh, hey, I'm doing it. She's like, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Well, hey, can you go pick up some milk from the grocery? She's like, dude, just lead with that. Don't even sound interested because I can tell in your voice that you're not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, anyway, we got question time or what? Yeah, man. We have question time. Uh, I just sent the link. I'm gonna, That's my last time sending it. Oh, yeah. Moons was blasting me too, bro. All y'all were blasting me in chat, bro. I was trying to carry this heavy load, bro. We had like 80 viewers, bro. That was heavy. You know the worst thing is when my viewership is low and you come in my chat and you just... Um, spam like eight things like and I'm like dude I can't ban him like uh, I'm like fuck I just gotta embrace this bro I'm just I'm, I'm or gonna... Stan comes in my chat like hey hey he's like why you wearing, why you always wear a hat are you bald <laughs> fuck you dude <laughs> fuck you man damn son <laughs> uh, no I'm not bro but my hair is thin so fuck you go on sorry questions sorry sorry I'm I'm getting I'm getting tilted All right, just man. like on the pill team we're going in bro we're going in uh first one I just wanted to say hi hey man what's up thanks for thanks for passing by honestly huge thanks to everybody for just watching it's really for fun real. to do these it's just seeing the viewership increase and seeing people like more excited to to just talk about the game regardless of if we disagree or we agree Avlik and I disagree all the time like before <laughs> during and after the podcast but yeah look at this sy- symbiote yeah uh, let it go Avlik okay. <laughs> yeah. so uh, that was funny that was so funny Dude, uh, getting you on symbiote strangle you I thought about scalping you <laughs> literally when I went to sleep I had dreams about it go on though but I, I love the fact that we can talk and just spam memes at each other and just talk about stuff about the game, about other things, and and we've been talking about this too. We're gonna try and get guests on the podcast, and even think about branching out and talking about other things. We literally started this podcast talking about the Sunday shivers, bro. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> the Sunday scaries, man. Ooh, man, it makes me nervous. Yo, uh, Fridays are Friday like. 5 p.m. is so good. Bro, you closed the laptop, bro. <laughs> you right. closed the laptop. I hate you living for the weekends, and I've gotten away with that, or gotten away from that by working remote and, like, kind of, like, not just focusing on those days. And I, my life has gotten better for it. But it is still something special. And then, like, boom, Sunday night comes. It's like, damn, bro. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, what the fuck is touching me, bro? Like, why? Like, you just feel like something's behind you, bro. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Questions, questions, questions. Fuck. Yeah. Yo, how many commissioners can a fit in his beard? How many you think, bro? That gun's fucking huge. I know, bro. It's heavy, too. I feel like it's really top-heavy. Sometimes I let my beard get down kind of low, and I'm like, dude, like, pirates are not in season. It's not Halloween. It's overplayed in Halloween. Like, there's nothing... I don't know. Pirates are just... I'm not a pirate fan, so I think if it gets too long... Okay, wizard, but I'm not old enough yet, right? So it's like I got to keep it trimmed. AK, I don't think a, a commissioner or even an, an under boss would fit in my beard, man. You could probably Sorry. tie the, the bottom around the, the trigger, and they would just hang off. Bro, just get that full. And then you swing, and then it would pa. It would just shoot. That's real like, flick damn, shots, like, bro. Like I think that dude's carrying, bro. I think that dude has. I think that guy has a gun on him. So like, yeah, bro, no shit. Uh, should Gallows be removed from the Planet Side Two community? Hmm. That's oh, a tough man. one. That's a personal one, but we won't address it as a personal one. Um, no, man. I mean, honestly, I know I meme about it a lot, and I like sometimes get a little sad because Gallows seems never to be serious. But when he 
does his casting, man. He's he's really put some energy into it, mm -hmm. and it's been impressive, man. I, uh, he's a good caster, and I've, uh, I've been appreciative to have him around in the community. And he does so much of the legwork, obviously for free. Other people do th stuff for pill and whatnot, but he does a lot of just community stuff. And it's not fun to do those things and, and to deal with everyone's memes. So he embraces it well because of his personality. So no, absolutely not, man. He's a great person. Yeah, man. And honestly, I, I I'll pull it for the rest of the rest of the people watching. A little one minute poll, see what everybody thinks. But uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> damn, bro, he might get removed. He's gonna get blasted, bro. But uh, I, I I I'm in I'm in full agreement. Uh, overall, like he's the one we hit seventy views because of him. He was he was doing a little That's cast. That's true. You got the big host, bro. He was Thank doing you. a cast of the uh, I think it was uh, Lethal Force versus Bax A. I'm not sure what the result of that was. If someone in chat wants to let us know what the scores what was were. The result? Yeah, uh, but. Yeah, like he, he does so much for the community. He's working on getting a uh, a vehicle version of uh, infantry scrims with the script that we have that a uh, turtle made, and trying to get that over onto a vehicle side so that other people can play. So and, and you know get vehicles off of live, okay? Well, I don't think that's what that's going to yeah. do, unfortunately. But hopefully. Um. So yeah, I, I think overall, Gellis does a lot of stuff, and uh, he's he's a really good guy. He might be, you know, potentially a, a podcast. To uh, excuse me, not host. Well, potentially a podcast guest that we might bring oh, on sure. eventually. Dude, if Gellis is not on the podcast, I'd be that would be that would be messed up, bro. I'd be sad, but you know, each their own. Uh, and it looks Damn. like fifty-four percent, fifteen to thirteen. That was close, man. Close, that was pretty dude. close. I voted no. I'm just saying. Uh, what is your favorite color? No, we have to like. He, he's not gonna be in the podcast now. He's we can't kick him because. Oh dang! Oh, we we God not... <laughs> forbid. We I I Eltai slash Liddy still has command of backs. I can't. I have like thirteen fucking captains, and they're always fucking changing it to the Brazilian flag, and it's bullshit. Um, but anyway, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Yeah, bro. What's I your favorite color? What's the next question, bro. Uh, I, I, blue. I don't know. I don't really have. I don't know, man. I like bright colors. I'm one of those guys, uh, but then like I buy bright colored things and, I, and then I, I I realize I can't really wear them and it's bullshit. So um, I don't know, maybe just a blue. I like blue. I'm blue. weird. Oh, I'm weird, bro. I am either Pink. I like no 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 I like black, or I like rainbows, bro. My mouse be <laughs> rainbowy. I my, like no color or like other colors. Or at my okay, keyboard no. on rainbow, <laughs> yes. bro. I got this little figure. I got this little figure at my desk. Like I built this John. I didn't, dude. My let, little guy, yeah. Random story, bro. I bought this thinking it was built, and then it came in like pieces, and then I had to build it. That was that was depressing. I got my little guy somewhere. Oh yeah. Oh fuck, it's a ninja. It's not my homie. Um, got that from work. Got a bullet. Can't have that on stream though. Yeah, Liddy knows it's Doraemon. Heck yeah. Uh, but yeah, even like my posters, it's just a bunch of different colors. Yo, you bro, out of bro, Ava, come back! <laughs> put your hand, put your hand like this. Okay, okay. Bro, we almost lost. Hey, he almost fell into the void. Bro, he almost demystified. But yeah, like what I want to do too is like for my guitars, I want to have like all of like the the main colors. I think next guitar I'm gonna get's gonna be yellow. I have like a cream white, a dark blue. Um, so yeah, I just, I either like black, usually my, my wardrobe is either all black or I wear like rainbow. I mean, my hair is fucking orange right now. So, um, true, true. yeah. And it's been green before it's been purple. It's been pink. Like I've colored my hair a bunch of colors too. So fun stuff. I always get he roasted. Was ascending to the astral plane. <laughs> <laughs> we pulled him back, bro. I'm sorry. Did I bring you, you out? I want to see my cue. <laughs> 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 bro, it's just... <laughs> All right, next question, bro. Uh, hey, great stream. As a soldier of NCCR, I zer this sounds like a Travis question, bro. This sounds like something that TKs me a lot. This, this is this is either a Travis question or a Sane question. But hey, great stream. As a soldier of NCCR, I zerg for the boys in blue, and capturing territory brings me great joy. This pog event that the that salty territory players go to is great, as it leaves the true gods of Planet Side to roam free. My comrades and I plan on getting the path to of series to t plan on getting on the path of series to TI uh, alloys tattooed on our blower backs <laughs> a celebration. What are your thoughts on the? <laughs> What are your thoughts on this change coming to the middle of Fundar, and what adjustments would you suggest? Hey, man, this is something that I've been working on in the shadows. I was like, look, how do I get number one NC kills if Full Metal is also playing? One, change my weapon. Fucking Anchor is not doing it. Gold Varen or not. Two, 
Get fucking Trihoid Leroy out of there. Get Zyros the fuck out of there. Get get them all out. All them the, all out. If you're Katie above two, you out. They, they don't play blue. So instead of having to fight these guys, right, I can just, oh, go play Pog. Oh, look at me. Flexing my 6v6. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no. Now they're out for live, and I can grind. And I got number one NC kills. Boom. Just like that, bro. Yeah, I would Next say, question. I will say, your longest kill streak did come coincidentally at the time that all the good players were playing Pog, bro. 69, dude. 69 69 kills. I champ but uh I, I just thought that question was really funny the the, <laughs> the getting the path from series to TI always tattooed on our lower backs but we kind of <laughs> talked about <laughs> we talked about uh what's it called the uh what's it called? <laughs> it's so funny because no one know oh dude that's so f- I'm sorry I'm they just would just look at it and be like huh <laughs> I'm imagining the tattoo artist be like you sure you want this on your back bro it's like well it's a path to it bro so it's like oh you hike this is my life <laughs> Like, oh, it's you hike too. I hike. It's like oh, what what mountaintop is that? It's like oh, dude, dude. it's not even named. Uh, but the serious part of that answer we kind of talked about with the map balance, so the center of the map and the changes. So uh, if you missed that part, uh, it'll be in the VOD when we uh, upload it to YouTube. Uh, usually you'd upload it the next day, so keep an eye on that. Subscribe to YouTube. Um, it's free, bro. It's literally subscribing free. Subscribing to Twitch is not free. Subscribing to YouTube is free. Hell and we need yeah. a thousand subscribers. And that's a lot of people. So. Subscribing new, 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 new. Uh, Next question. Would you have the same amount of fun if you were getting... Oh, actually, this is a pretty good next question. Would you have the same amount of fun if you were getting killed as often from an equally skilled player, averaging a cadre of one, as you would by farming players who are less skilled in live circumstances? Disregard controlled competitive circumstances. Oh, okay. So I was going to answer that with with the controlled uh, I don't know if you've like watched my stream a lot like I've been like etching up I don't really care about stats anymore but my stats have gotten a little bit better with the Gossaw but dude I I fight good players all day long bro because I'm not fucking playing VS with the rest of them but not even joking man I fight decent to good players all day long and I get killed all day long bro I, I hate when fucking recursion tells me you're being farmed i'm like fuck dude everyone in chat's like oh fuck, bro dude. relax why'd you have to remind um, me no but it's fun fighting good players man it's fun seeing leroy on vs it's fun seeing zaros it's fun seeing gels shocked like there's a long list of players and there's a long list of players that are not you know the top players you know they're just fun people that you 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 get to fight over and over again and and sometimes like they have a better position on you or they have a better base or they're just playing better than you and they, and they kill you, man. And they kill you like three times in a row or something like that. It happens all the time. And you know what? That's what makes the game fun, though. I don't want to roll around. I don't want to be in God mode to slay everybody. Yeah, it's cool to go on a streak. But, um, yeah, no, I, 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 I like finding good players. Absolutely. Yeah, man. And I think the I, I, I'll show my example of how this usually recur- occurs for me. Um, I'll be streaming and... Uh, uh, the more I play and the less I verse, uh, depending on the engagements, um, I'm sitting up straight and uh, the, the longer my session is, the more I, you know, I start to, I start to turn into this. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> but then Leroy Twizzlers killed you or Zyros killed you. Uh, any of my boys, like, I don't know, Moons killed you, Aphil killed you. Oh, shit, here we go again, bro. You sit up straight, you bring that shit back, and you in it. And now you're gaming for real. So I think I personally love it. I go into zombie mode. I don't know I don't know True. where this, I, I guess the, the, what's the word? The the assumption that... <laughs> <Don't kill me. laughs> Fly with that C4, bro. <laughs> uh, no, no, that was funny, bro. Uh, the what's it called? It's just I don't know where the assumption that uh, uh, good players just like to farm bad players came from. Because honestly, the more I fall into that, the more I start to almost like dissociate from me even playing the game. My aim gets point. worse. I'm just not as focused anymore. So when I have that wake up call of like a good player playing, I like I'm in it, and I feel like those those periods of being in it are the most fun. So I personally would love it. That's why playing in those isolated competitive environments are fun. Um, Very true. And, or there's nothing like fighting like a good player and like two other bad players, like or lesser players. It sounds so terrible. It's like okay, fighting three good players and like Leroy is one of them, and you kill all three, and you just feel like a Paul champ oh, out of this bro. world. It feels so good, you know. You see, yeah, bro, I'll, um, I'll be playing like TR and I'll kill three backs tags in a row. I'll just be like, later, bitch. The the scariest thing though is when you, you are like just you know chilling, like just going through your farm session, and you just hear this. 
no better, for, for, for better or worse, you know, blah, blah. You're like, oh, it starts getting louder. You're like, oh, fuck, there's a good player here. We got a V6er in, in the room, bro. Like, fucking go, bro. Who could it be? Who is it? And it's like, it's like oh, yo, someone oh, talking shit, bro. And you just like start like getting into it. Nah, I feel it's you like on that one. 20 dead NC. You're like, bro, you fucking v 6 in my boys, dude. I, dude, I can't sleep at night sometimes because I think about the NC getting slaughtered somewhere, bro, by DA on the rooftop at a bio, uh, bio lab, and it makes me sick. Yeah, man, I agree. Just, man, Damn, the, bro! Don't the, say this those Zoe D, voice, dude. Oh, those totally. D. I was gonna go into it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was bro, gonna say yeah, those DA yeah, tags just shooting down <laughs> on the spawn room, bro. It hurts, bro. Uh, but yeah, man. I think having the the best fights, honestly, were the ones where a good outfit was versing another equally skilled outfit. And it's a bit like, of a war. Yeah, those backs Goku caps that we had back in like 2015, 2014, so much fun. When I was in 1TR, we'd verse like a like more like a VCO level. Like that was super fun too. Capping against 50-50. Oh, dude, when Alvester kills you, bro. There are clips of me dying to Alvester. Let's not even talk about it. Next that's question. Probably, that's probably one, yeah, that's probably one of the worst. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if Alvester like, or Q is farming you, oh, He's like, oh, why do you suck? Like, oh, he doesn't even be six. He's just like, he's like disgusted. Like, oh, he's just like, hey, hey, hey doctor, why are you fucking, bro? And you're like, shit, bro. And you're like, relax, Alistair. We're just playing a game. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let's let that one go. Uh, how much can Liam bench? I bet he'll toss that bar up with two plates on each side <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, no, bro, he's growing pretty fast, dude. You you showed me a... Yeah, A Flick won't show on stream his child, but, you know, prior when we were prepping for, for the cast, uh, Liam was crying a bit. And you know, you know, Aflick brought him on, on, on camera real quick. He was, did stop was caring for his child. He saw Uncle Shockter. Big smile on his face, bro. You know, we got bro, bam on he them bitches. He loves the Moroccans, bro. He loves, <laughs> he loves the Moroccans, bro. Um, yeah, man. I, I, I take him with me when I'm like working out in the garage or something. And I mean, he doesn't know, obviously, what the fuck's going on. Yeah, but You'll uh, toss him the bar. Yeah, we'll t- <laughs> yeah not right now. Crush his fucking soul, dude. Jeez. Uh, that's funny. Uh, thoughts on a 0.5 times headshot multiplier to punish toxic vets for willingly bullying new players away from the game? Man, these troll questions are... They, that wasn't that funny. I'll be honest. Yeah, it's trolls. I and mean, we're just going to answer it anyway. Um, could you imagine like not even having that ability like, and then fighting like nine players or like 5v1 or like even a 3v1 and like you have no... like It's just like, oh, well, we have more people. You know, like Solaris, and it's like, well, never mind. I'm not gonna go down this tangent. But no, that's fucking bull. That's that's stupid. Games need to have a skill gap. I think that's it's a good thing to have. Mm-hmm. I hate playing like games where it's like, oh, you're um, you're rank uh 13, and you need to be rank 65 to be max. Well, we'll just um, we'll just take the rank 13, and we'll just balance them out like this. We'll just inflate your stats, and then you can go to the the, the battle zone, and like all your gear is like 65. It's like that that shit just pisses me off. Like, why even play the game? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Man, that's a bad example, but th- that type of shit just is annoying. There needs to be a skill gap because it gives you something to strive for and to get better and to work for. N- everyone doesn't need a ribbon, bro. Next question. Yeah, I, I don't really care. I-, I-, I think everybody should have the same thing across the board. Uh, thoughts on the launcher directive? I don't even know what it is. Just get racks all the launchers? I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> like the doing all the. Is, yeah, is the, get, kraken the Kraken. Or is that the C4 one? I C4. think. No, the, the I think the Kraken, bro. That kind of makes me want to do Dude, the thing I was doing earlier, bro. Directives and, oh, and, and <laughs> things have changed so much. What? No, I, I was just doing something funny. Go ahead, bro. That like it's hard to even think about those things, like because like launchers have changed a lot. Like the Massive Moon was useful at one point, and then it's, now it's not. And like uh, I don't even I haven't even used a different rocket launcher for so long, other than the Decimator that I, I can't even really speak to it. Um, but. Um, <sighs> It creates a bad play style, right? I mean, most players don't do that anymore because you know the you know the one shotting used to be a big meta back in the day, and they got rid of like the splash damage. I think. Wait, why are you making that face, dude? What's going on? They saw my hentai, bro. Oh, the kraken! <laughs> they saw my hentai. <laughs> that's, the best part of the, that's the best part of the whole thing. That sounds good. Oh, so, bro, I love this feature, brother. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's just blank walls. Like they just cut me off. The oh, bro. That was good. That uh, was good. But I, I don't know, bro. Araxing, uh, Araxing launchers, dude. I, it's not my thing, bro. I'm not. I can barely. I could barely do the launcher part for. Uh, what's it called? The launcher part for the heavy assault directive. That took me five years. I still yeah, haven't I really finished it on TR. Because <laughs> I feel like that directive came out and they just like gave you like, oh, you already had some kills on this, like, or maybe they didn't. I don't remember. It was just so long ago that I I have it done. I don't have to. I don't have to do directives. I hate that type of grind. Yeah. Oh, anyway, next question. Sorry. Hey, it's me, Moons. What's up, Moons? 
Uh, not sure if y'all talked about this, but I feel directive weapons are very bland and don't offer a good reward for getting. They should be more rewarding and have more faction flavor to them. Uh, we did talk about that. Um, <laughs> Watch the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I, he, I think he was playing in the scrim earlier. So, yeah, we did uh, touch okay. upon that. And uh, if you did miss it, um, just uh, feel free to check out the VOD. Bro, you're fading out again. <laughs> Fuck, man. Bro, dude, he's I'm... ascending into the ethereal plane, bro. There we go. <laughs> Lucas, 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 Lucas. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just uh, feel free to check out the VOD either here on Twitch or preferred on YouTube. Got to get those numbers up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Gang, gang. I only read anti for this story. Uh, why do I even read sometimes? Go ahead. Uh, to both of you, who is your favorite Wu-Tang member? That's going to be a question just for you. Wait, why not? You go first, bro. I was going to say, I I isn't Ghostface Killer one? Yeah, I was going to say, because I, I didn't really listen to much Wu-Tang while knowing who Wu-Tang was. But I've like never, I've like, I've probably heard their songs, obviously, but I've never been like, actually like Wu-Tang, like, let me like, listen. No, so what know. made me aware of Wu-Tang is uh, just, and it's so dumb, it's just my generation, bro. But like, I listened to, there's like this collab album that Offset from Migos and, uh, 21 Savage made with uh what's his name Metro Boomin and like the best song on that album was Ghostface Killers and I didn't know like what that even meant so I googled more about the song and it was like oh Ghostface is like one of the uh one of the people that is a member of uh the Wu-Tang Clan so I just like learned more about that and him being like my entry point into Wu-Tang yeah. I, oh, room to the, Rock. I didn't know Millie. room I, every time I Millie Rock I'm like <sighs> I don't want to knock my coffee over. But yeah, bro, I'm a Ghostface fan, bro. Just because he was, like, my entry point into, like, knowing who they were. Um, but, yeah, if you don't know any 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 of them, it's fine, bro. And, yo, Graham with the subscribe on YouTube, appreciate Thanks. it. Everybody else should appreciate do that. You. Um, ch- 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 or not. Or not. Uh, do you think 2015 alerts were better, or was it just outfits? That's actually a really good question. Was it... Because that is, I think, both worked for each other to help each other out but it's like which one which one was the driving factor was it the alerts were they actually better or was it just the outfits the relationships with the, among each other the the pop in command chat like you would always hear people like working together on that like what do you think bro that so 8 to 10 prime time period outfits 100% made alert meta what it was whether it was da dropping on a tech plant primary balcony just to farm people and maybe get the cap and, and eat on people um or you know you i don't know other outfits but outfits in general made made that critical it's like oh fuck goku's pushing for this tech plant um on whatever i think the um what is it called major facility alerts was were the best ones those are the ones i actually enjoyed i don't, I don't think i cared about the other ones i can't even remember what the other ones were um but it was nice because you could jump continents because there was no queue system, right? There was no, there's too many players on a continent. So it's like, you could have an outfit grinding for a tech plant on a dead continent and like not give a shit about it. And then all of a sudden there's a platoon at this tech plant. It's like, fuck, we gotta go Amherst right now. We gotta fucking stop this. We'll say Goku, but they wouldn't do that shit. Maybe they would, I don't know. And then you like, you'd go there, dunk them, and then you go to another continent and like have to dunk on a tech plant and then try to capture this other tech plant. I like like the moving around aspect of it, like trying to just do, like just fly around for two hours. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and outfits made it important because, like, okay, Goku's here, AC's here, DA's here, or I don't know, dude, TR has been so fucked up by outfits. I don't even know any good outfits on TR. Because um, I don't think Blop, Blop, Blop was really a part of that. Maybe they were, but I think one I, TR I, got really close. But um, leaned more on the side of just, like, community rather than getting better. But when I was playing with 1TR, we had a lot of caps that reminded me of Bax caps that we were doing. Like the 60-40. S- yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are some of the best times in the game, I think, was mm-hmm. back then. Agreed. And not being so worried about, like, stats and stuff. And, and now, like, I, we don't care about stats anymore, but there just doesn't feel like there's much. Because outfits are dead, like... Like, it's... it's And I know we joke about B-Way, and they've kind of, like, toned things down. But, like, it was, like, B-Way, like... There's nobody else. Yeah, it's like it's just B-Way on the server, like doing their thing, which is cool. But like, it's kind of like it's like if Bax came back and we had a Platina Bax, which is overkill. Um, it would you be kind of like, okay, we're just there's too many of us on to like farm. You know what I mean? It's just kind of yeah. We like, and no, I there's noticed no that. challenge. There's no other outfit to go up against. And like, oh, like I don't know, AC or DA or somebody good is like actually at this fight, and there's there's not just one of them randomly on. Like you know, tears fucking on. It's like no, like there's no like. I don't know. I, well, am I tired? I don't know, man. There's just no outfits to fight against, and there's no conflict, and it's just kind of like that part sucks. And that's when I realized that there's no point in being in outfits. Outfits have no purpose, and mm-hmm. the community is what held them together. 
I agree. Yeah, I think, and I, I'm 100% in agreement. I think outfits were were what drove the the that golden era, that golden age, that 2014, 2015 uh, period, excuse me, uh, in Planet Side that really made those 8 to 10, that prime time alert, so much fun. Uh, and I think the... L, Iron, Honey Badgers, okay. You're tossing some in the ring, I appreciate it. Yeah, that. I think, I don't think Leverage and Iron were as impactful as, like, the oh, Honey no. Badgers. I think 903 was a really impactful outfit back then, 1TR. Um, oh, but, I was gonna say, Sam, never mind, go ahead. Yeah, so th- I think those were a little more impactful, because I, I remembered L, Iron, Zaps, Blop... Those outfits, Zaps is a VS, but I'm just using it as another example. Like those were, those were outfits like TIW, the DA back in the day. Like I didn't feel like they were like the ops type of outfits. Those were like the gaming community. We're just good at the game and we're gonna play it. Um, but like Bax, One TR, Goku, B Way. Now they weren't around back then. Um, those were like the the operations were capturing territory control, winning alerts. Um, so that's that's kind of that's kind of what drove that. Um, and I agree. There's really no point in being in an outfit right now, uh, outside no benefit, of just yeah. yeah, just either having outfit resources and calling orbital strikes, etc., or um, being just in a group of people so you're not playing the game by yourself. Because this almost goes back to that thing that Kawhi was saying earlier. Where it's like why why is playing a game multiplayer less stressful to you than playing a game by yourself? Right, it's like right, right, it just depends right, on the person. Right. If you're an extroverted person and you want to play video games, it's like you're gonna lean towards like MMOs and play with people. So, what year was uh, Matheson Watson the service mesh? Because uh, I, I think that was before actually... me was pinnacle the best of planet side like i and I, i'm sure you know people would disagree but that like actually finally once in my entire planet like we playing for something and like it's just the name of a server but it was like something like we've never had before and it was like cool let's fucking hold it over people's head for the rest of the fucking planet side 2 career that was pinnacle planet side 2 for me was having like that brought that did bring the community together because even like you're at that time like because i was in vco like your elite you know infantry outfits were like even kind of partook a little bit and like he did their thing farming people but um that and the alert meta yeah was part of pinnacle plan so mm-hmm. agreed man um hey flick why do you always wear a hat are you bald <laughs> dang that's messed no, up no. bro that's I messed up me, i have streams with no hat on bro i just like hats man honestly um, no, yeah, you were a hat guy even before, I'm pretty sure. Because I've known you for, like, six years now, bro. Like, true. You were always a hat guy. Whenever I'd see a picture of you, you'd, like, send pictures. We we had, like, a Google Hangout back in the day, bro. You remember that? Yeah, like, we'd yeah. just send pictures of ourselves and stuff like that. So, he's always been a hat guy. Like, I'll get a bald fade, like, all the time. I'll just, you know, boom, I'll pop it off, and then I'll I'll, I'll wear it off stream. But, I don't know, for, like, this is so, like, not, like, you're like, oh, it's such an excuse. But I, I don't know if the... Like the camera just like makes me look like an idiot when I even when I have like a, a fresh clean cut man, um because I go out all the time without a hat on and you know when I when I got a clean cut but stream wise I'm like eh, I look better with a hat on. True, true. And true. I don't and I don't have to do anything. It's like yeah, true. And I feel it, it, you know it uh what's the word it uh it, it complements your head shape, bro. I think it looks Thanks, good. Dude. I like I, hats don't look good on me. I got a massive cranium, bro. And I'm balding too. Hair. I'm fucked, bro. Once this is all gone, I'm going bald <laughs> yeah, as hell. Like you have the most normal straight hairline ever. Thanks, bro. I appreciate you trying to make me feel. No, better. I do this. I do this. <laughs> yo, you can see my widow's peak right here. It goes like this. I do this every fucking day just to keep it clean, you know, because I like it being. Yeah, true, true, true. But once oh I'm bald. Oh my gosh. No, and and you know, Zyro says I'm gonna become Leroy. Nah, dude, I'm becoming Alpha. Alpha Sonic Hyper Tire, Hypersonic uh, Fire Hydrant, bro. I'm going full balling on that bitch. I don't care, bro. I'm committing. Go ahead, bro. In high school, I cut my hair. For some, I don't know why. I don't know. I didn't have money. And my parents wouldn't take me something. And I literally cut my hair. Like you know how, like on the side, like right here, you have like this, like little, this little hair, this hair that comes out. Yeah, I'm balding yeah, yeah. here too, bro. So <laughs> I was like, I was thinking like, um, because I like did like a buzz back in the day, like in high school. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I don't think that's supposed to be there. And I had like a, I've, I've always had kind of had a beard, like a chin strap or something in high school. I literally took these off, and somebody was like, "Look, everyone's looking at me like, what the fuck did you do, bro? It looked like I literally a fucking oval on my fucking face, perfect fucking oval. It was like, a, I looked so fucking stupid. It took so long for my hair to grow back. Worst, one of the worst experiences of my high school career was cutting these little side boys off. They're very important, chat. Do not let these guys go. Treat them with care. I remember, uh, for me, 
I had one of my, the first haircuts where I ever got a lineup, I didn't ask for the lineup. I would always just get haircuts, right? And my hairline had more of a curvature to it. It would curve in like this. Oh, and, about, uh, yeah, yeah. and this wouldn't come out as much. But this guy started cutting into like here and started shaving it. And this was like in like high school, bro. I got <laughs> home. I was livid. I was just like, why the fuck this dude mess up my hair, bro? I'm about to go back. My mom's like, you look good. I'm like, I'm finna beat his stupid ass, mom. Yo, hold me back. And she's not even holding me back. She's like, sit your dumb ass down, bro. I'm like, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got bro. a haircut once in, at IU, Indiana Bloomington, bro. And this dude's fingers were so fat. He like was cutting it. And he's like, "All right, dude." He's like, "Hey, man, uh, it's done." I'm like, "Bro, what are you?" I'm like, "Look at myself. I, go, I look like a fucking idiot, bro." I look Have like you a ever? <laughs> idiot. And this dude goes, "Hey, man, sorry, man. my fingers are too fat. I can't, can't cut it." <laughs> <laughs> and then my dumb ass fucking, I'm like, "Whatever." I just pay this dude and fucking leave. But I was like, "Dude, I look like." And then I didn't. I don't know. I was so like disgruntled by it. I just had to get out of there. I was like, I can't let somebody else here cut my hair. Who the? How do you get a job? It's like, oh, fuck, we let that car go with three tires. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't think we filled we, up the air on one yeah, of them. We don't guns. have any more tires, bro. It's like, <laughs> what? Anyway, sorry. Any more questions? Are we done? No, we have a bunch more. But I was going to oh, say, have fuck. you ever have you ever talked back to the person who did your haircut and gave him? Because I've had that situation where the dude, I before I had a dedicated barber when I was like younger and my mom was the one paying for my haircuts, I would just go to whoever was available and right, yeah, yeah. I swear, when I was older, I think I hit like 17. I still didn't have a job because no one would hire your boy. Sad, bro. <laughs> Moroccan. Sad. Feels bad, man. But um, I remember uh, getting a haircut from this. There's like a haircutter you right across the street. It's the Korean barbershop. I feel like every neighborhood has one. Uh, but I went across the street, got my haircut, and then the lady was like, all right, it's done. And I looked at myself. I was like, no, it's not, bro. <laughs> I literally said it's not. And then she got to work on it more. Uh, but, but yeah, we got a couple more questions. Uh, Shocker, when we play in Battlefield, probably gonna play after this, bro. I'm gonna be, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna stream after this. Just gonna grab some food and we'll hop on. Uh, hey, it's me, Moons again. What's up, Moons? Uh, I asked this question before y'all talked about it. Uh, sorry. Okay, so he apologized about asking that directive weapon again. Uh, but he said another question. Y'all think the mission system is gonna make the game worth playing a lot more again? Uh. <sighs> I'm just going to try to answer this quickly. The issue with bringing in new things, I feel like, is you have to bring it in very simple, and then you have to build upon it. The problem is a lot of things don't get built upon, and they remain simple, which they're useless, like ASP points. Um, but it's so I don't think it's going to bring back a bunch of people. I just don't like it's just to me it's not that cool unless it be, it's something that's so cool. And I just don't see that happening until it gets built upon. And even then, meh, I almost want to say no. It's it's like drawing on the map. Everyone was like, dude, why can't we draw on the map? I need it for my my outfit. And then like they finally <laughs> released it. Everyone's like, never use it. Everyone's like, oh, just drawing dicks. <laughs> it was a, yeah, it was a lie. We didn't need it. You know, like there's so many things like that. And like some of those things would be useful early on, but eh, I don't know. It depends how it's implemented. It'd have to be really cool and really well done to be to be good. Yeah, I I, I kind of fall on the same boat as you. I, it's not gonna make the game worth playing a lot <laughs> more again. Mission, like... Yeah, it's not like having dailies and stuff like that. That's never been something that made people want to play a game more. That just gave you things to do in a game where you enjoyed the gameplay loop. Um, bro, you gotta unmod Travis. He keeps updating the titles for your streams, bro. You should beat his ass. Uh, yeah, bro, it's the podcast where you can't just be changing the title like that, dog. Bro, beat his ass. Uh, but the, yeah, she I think you gotta, I, I, we kind of talked about this too. So if you haven't, if you didn't get a chance to watch the VOD, uh, check it out when we upload it to YouTube, but, uh, we, there's core competencies that make the game good. And, uh, that's not a, a core competency. That's just going to give you more things to do in the event that the core competencies improve, but it's not going to make the game better. It's just going to very vague missions. What the fuck? Yeah. And there isn't really any meaningful rewards from it either. Hey, maybe there's a mission to Jaeger for the the queue for the six v six. Okay, now now I think it brings back a bunch of people. And it's amazing. Or is it missions like, hey, go capture the A point at Quartz Ridge? It's like, no, bitch. There's nothing over there. I'm not going there. You know what I mean? Okay, sorry. Next question. You said there's a lot. Uh, should useless guns get fixed? Like giving a one x time zoom to the face shift? They're making the spiker charge shot not use a shot useful like in Halo. Uh, Say it again. Should I, I it should basically should useless guns be made more meta? Um, I kind of fall with uh, what Rel kind of says, where each gun kind of has a usefulness, 
and that they're guns that will be meta just because they are what the the player base thinks is the best at doing the task that they want to do. So overall, like I don't think guns should get fixed as long as guns have uses that make sense, then that's fine. But overall, like I I don't think you should make a one X zoom phase shift or a spiker like the viable meta weapon as well. <laughs> Dude, I said it before in one of the other podcasts. I'll say it again. I think we even talked, hinted on it already. There will be nerds sitting down somewhere crunching the numbers, and there will be a new meta weapon. There will always be one or a couple weapons or gear or whatever it is in a game that is meta. Okay, you can't. You can't have. We have so many fucking weapons in this game. There's no way to make them all viable without becoming like. LMGs have their own form of an SMG, and all and LMGs have their own form of a sniper rifle. Like, there's only so much variety that you can do. There's always going to be a meta weapon or something that like, this just it is what it is. Like, there's no way of getting, you can't fix fifty fucking weapons and they're all viable. It's impossible. It's impossible. I think where the game is gun wise and infantry wise is, is is pretty good. I don't think we really need to fuck with that shit too much more. Yeah, and I and, and I'm in full agreement with you as well. It's two point four X meta. It's it's like it's just one of those things where guns were made to have specific uses and whatever the the developer intent was when they made those weapons they either worked out in the community's favor where it's like it fell under that popularity contest or it it, it didn't and and it's just not seen as usable but I feel like every gun is usable for a good player it's just a matter of which one is usable the best and that's always where the meta weapon argument will fall yeah you're not gonna have like seven lmgs let alone the other weapons smgs all that shit. they're not gonna like okay and then now they're all balanced and like which one are you gonna select it's like no there's always going to be there might be like two or three lmgs that are viable or something like that but uh, for the most part there's always going to be something that will take the forefront no matter how much balance you do yeah man so, uh, are any of the directive weapons other than the LMGs actually rewards? I think that's a completely subjective question based on your playstyle, honestly. I think a lot of us in the like the Twitch community of Planetside, we're all just kind of like heavies and light assaults. Uh, and we're very... Uh, what's the word? We're very biased towards like the meta weapons in general. So when we get a weapon that's like the directive weapon, whether it's like the Dark Star... Or I don't, I don't know the butcher. There's all these different the tempest. Like they're all they're not necessarily as good as the meta weapon that we wanted or that we've been using for a while. So we just go back to it. And I think the the Beetlejuice falls under that. Uh, it's it's an Orion. It has a lot of ammo, and that's why it's like a really good reward. So um, in my opinion, I think cosmetically they're cool and for the average player that like plays medic and doesn't really care about ttk or damage fall off and they're just playing the game normally then yeah it's a it's a meaningful reward but i think there is something that could be done to make them better so that more players like us that are, are you know we fall under that we use the meta weapons and we want to be really good and we always are trying to tweak our gameplay to get better we there can be some sort of thing to make them more enticing to use and feel like we've been rewarded so I don't know if you have think any opinion on that as well. I'm leave it right there, buddy. All right, bro. Can you guys have Q come in as a guest? I want to see no. all the holes no. in his wall. No. Bro, you don't want to see his shadows in his room? You know how creepy that would be? I uh, like Q, though. Maybe, yeah. you know what, whatever. We'll, we'll maybe, maybe. think about it very uh, lately. Why are you so weird? I don't know what that means. Which one of us, both? No, you just said, why are you so weird? I don't know if that's me or you. Maybe both? Everyone's weird, man. Yeah, everyone. No way to get around that, yeah, but that's an easy question, I guess. Thank you. Did you skip leg day? <laughs> oh, that's fucking Aunt Dan for sure. <laughs> Bro, I've, sh I've literally showed my legs on stream before. No. I have meaty thighs. I, I actually had an issue to where, like, I stopped, like, even squatting because, like, I just the jeans like my, I just I couldn't, fit. my thighs were just too big for my jeans. I would, like, go and get, like, suits for, like, weddings and shit or, you know, tux fitted. And it was just, like, awkward because it's, like, well, your thighs are big, but we don't uh, like we don't want to trim it too much because then it'll, it'll explode out of them. You know, I've ripped my suit pants three times dancing to DMX for Fighters Dance in the last three weddings. Um, so no, I haven't skipped leg day, bro. I nice, got big bro. legs, got meaty boys. Yeah, man. When I did the guitar unboxings for these two on stream, I accidentally showed my feet, bro, and I I I didn't get the end of it, bro. It took like four or five days for people to stop sending me pictures of my feet, so that was weird. Um, Ro Ro's not roasting me, bro. Chill. Bro, we, bro, we, bro, bro, we've seen you too, bro. Okay, chill, <laughs> bro. Uh, 
okay? We know it all. Bro, 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 don't let them talk to you like that. Bro, tie up the bandana. I'm about to have a brawl, bro. The fight between Apley and fucking, <laughs> fucking Rel, bro. Uh, hello, can you get Mukas on the podcast? Uh, I, I have been wanting to say something about this, honestly. Uh, as funny as I think it all is, the whole, like, multi-dimension cube and stuff like that. Um, you know, you know, sh- I don't want to say prayers going out because I'm not very religious or anything like that. But, like, you know, like, thoughts going out to, to Mukas. Like, hopefully he, he starts to, like, feel better because I think there's something up with, like, his like his mental psyche right now. And it might not be – he might not be at his, his best right now, especially with the COVID impacts and him being Moroccan. I don't know if he is in Morocco. I'm pretty sure he is, but I'm, I'm pretty much – aware of what's going on in Morocco too because all my family is there my mom's always watching Moroccan news while she's watching American news and uh you know the situation in Morocco is not uh not as bad as America but they're also you know pretty impacted by COVID a lot of people are stuck indoors they also have the available maybe that's part of it he's just logged in I mean I don't know he's pretty far though but you're right dude we shouldn't be yeah so it it is funny it is funny, and yeah, like there's a lot of people talking about like Etika, and like Etika was like you know another another sad one where it was like people were making fun of him, and he was like a really great guy, and I think he was uh, like bipolar, so he had like manic phases and then depressed phases. So um, like when yeah, you catch even funny until they kill themselves yeah. or something crazy like that, and then you're like, wow, I'm an asshole. So I mean, yeah, man. Again, so, we've already we already saw everyone take it too far with uh, pills, so um, you know. I yeah, hold man. back a lot, man. I know stuff about people, and I'm like, like, why are you memeing on me in, on Twitch chat? Like, I could send you back to the afterlife, but you know, I, I hold back. But you gotta be careful, man. People have feelings, so. Yeah, man, and it's 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 definitely one of those things where we can joke about it, we can have fun about it, but. Uh, yeah. as long as it's, w- it's within reason and it's good fun. Like I made jokes about it, but I kept it. I kept it also. Like people were watching me when I I watched his video like on stream and got to the part where like he was talking about like his cube and how he's ascended and stuff like that and like I made a couple jokes but then at the end I was like you know this dude should probably kind of seek out some mental health uh, support because I know Morocco bro there's not a lot of that um, it's a very religious country that blames things on 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 like the devil and it's kind of hard there he goes again. Uh, but I was gonna make a joke, but I was like, we we were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is one of those rough areas where uh, you know mental health support isn't as a, as available there as like you would have like in the European Union or or in in the states. So you know thoughts going out to Mukas. Hopefully he starts to feel a bit better, feel more like himself, and uh, you know nothing but love, bro. Nothing but love. We might spend, we might say a joke here or there, but it's always love. So uh moon saying uh just want to say Bax made me a good player made new friends and love you all thanks man thanks yeah. man appreciate you i don't know how, how many questions you got dog damn we got three nah, more we got three no, more I meant, like, oh oh like, from him bro, yeah yeah i think no nah, no nah, moon's is good bro it's just moons no one else has <laughs> these are always the moon's questions <laughs> Uh, like, oh, thanks for the community. Everyone's like, well, we didn't submit anything. So uh, good. Travis wants me to skip this question because he he. Uh, my bad if I if I ruin the mood about the cube questions, bro. But, uh, <laughs> Aflick, how many times have you been concussed? I, I, don't, I think it's been like eight, man. It's a little, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit up there now. Dang. I've retired from all physical contact, except for that dude that let his dog shit in my fucking yard, bro. I mowed today, and I swear to God, there's like four piles on it. And we're just, we're just gonna get down to physical altercation i feel like because i don't oh, know true the guy who like his dog sat on your lawn or something yeah dude it's getting like, i don't know just I, mean, I do think this dude's a little crazy so i need to be careful because i do have a family so yeah man uh and then last question uh when you playing age of empires with this homie uh i think this is directed towards me bro y'all's group is too good at the game bro Got Saiyan, got God Richard, got Liddy, the, the the great looking above everyone, the transcendent Liddy, omniscient. Everyone is just too good at it. I gotta I gotta get in the back. I gotta I gotta hop in, put my reps in, get better at it, and then and then I'll play. Interlude says he'll mentor me, bro. All right, you know I, I might have to pick you up on that offer, but uh. Wisdom so. cube, bro. I forgot. I used to play Age of Empires all the time with with Cody back in the day, um, and Ben, our mutual friend. Um, I don't know, man. I, now that I'm number one in CM world all time kills, uh, maybe I, I guess I can get into it. I just like weird. Like I, I can't like play a game casually. I feel like I have to, except for direct strike. I feel like I invest so much time into it. Maybe that's a good thing for Age of Empires. So maybe we can do that. Um, is that it? I think so. Uh, cool. Lex says, uh, Lex says we didn't answer his question, but I went through all of them, bro. I scrolled through each one. Did I skip it? 
Uh, what's your question, bro? We did get like uh, like two more that just slid in. Uh, hey, it's Moons again. I love you, man, and I'm kind of drunk, but I just like to say that I wish you fucking smeared shit on your wall. I hate that empty wall making me go crazy. He's got some stuff coming up, bro. He, 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 yeah, he's, he's, it's the last room that's going to get messed around with. And then uh, is Saiyan really a furry? That's a question for Saiyan, bro. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. I mean, I don't think Lux doesn't actually have a question. I'm assuming. Uh, he said, my question is, and then he copy pasted what you put. Yeah, so I don't, yeah, I'm assuming. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, all right, guys. Well, really appreciate everybody coming by. This is the most viewers we have ever doing this podcast, and we're only on that's episode true. five. That's true. Thank you for uh, the follows, by the way, too, and for yeah. Richard's uh, yeah. subscription. Yo, and, hit, and, the, hit up the YouTube, though, for real. It's down below. Yeah, man, and, uh, you know, it's really, again, a pleasure for, like, having you guys come by, having the chat interaction while we kind of talk about everything, and you guys roasting us is really fun. <laughs> follow me, too, bro. I'm trying yeah, to get... Yeah, follow Shocker. I'm back. Yo, I'm come back. on, bro. Like, yeah, you always out here doing your thing, bro. Let me get we some... Can, I, let me get some you love, bro. Me. I just, like, I see both of us together, so I just assume it's us. I don't think it's, like, it's Aflix Twitch or something like that. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, and then obviously shout out to Rel again for coming by and you know watching. It's it's always a pleasure to have kind of like a developer of the game that we're talking about listen to us talk and you know even though being, Twitch chat is brutal. Br- it's Thanks, brutal, man. yeah, oh, and bye. being willing to talk while you have someone like interlude, bro. Dang, just, I used it's to feel hard so bad here, for bro. Drew when he would stream and they'd just come into his channel because Drew's like overly nice and they'd just you eat him against the wall, bro. And it's like, bro, why are you streaming more? He's like, ah. Uh. Damn, bro, we fucking harsh. I'm not hosting Gellos. Go away. Thank you so much, guys, for real. Yeah. We appreciate you guys. Um, so, yeah. Subscribe to the guests. YouTube. We're getting some guests on the, on the channel, too. Yeah, Players bro. in the game, and maybe Rel said hit them up, so we'll hit them up. Yeah, man, we got really good guests lined up. We have really good ideas lined up, and <laughs> we're only getting started, bro. So we're only getting started, baby. <laughs> so, uh, once again. We're at the top of the mountain, but we're only halfway up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, once again, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yo, and bless uh, up, Kings. We'll talk to you guys again. Instagram, we know you're out there. Hey, bro, shout out Liddy. What the? Whatever, bro. Dang. Feels bad, man. Shout out Leo, Liddy. We know you're out there with the last song. We love you so much. Later, guys. Thank you. (laughs) Bye. Stop shining like the main. I smoke like the main.